How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today, we have a story of another spoiled kid who does something absolutely crazy. This is another one of those stories of those spoiled kids who are just, just so ridiculous that you, you just can't help but just sit there and think, wow, these people really populate the earth with, uh, with us. That's freaking crazy, bro. So with that all being said, leave a like in the video to claim you free nothing, and let's just jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the story, Adrian. And so there was a new kid who was moving into the neighborhood, and the new kid's mom reached out to a bunch of other kids' moms in the neighborhood because she was added to a neighborhood Facebook group or something. I don't know what moms do. I also don't know how Facebook works. I don't know much about either. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, uh, the mom must have reached out to Adrian's mom and said, hey, like, uh, I got a son that's your son's age. Um, or probably asked, like, if she has a son, how old her, her son is. And then, oh, my son's your age as well. So they got an invitation over. It was, uh, this was all happening over the summer. I think the plan was that, like, the spoiled kid, or who they didn't know was the spoiled kid, but we're going to call the spoiled kid, right? The spoiled kid just got there, and the spoiled kid's mom is like, ah, well, I want to make sure my son has friends as he goes into school. Obviously, I think all moms want that, right? So anyways, Adrian on one Friday night is driving over with his mom. And uh, they're driving to a place, a part of the neighborhood that they had never been to. I think Adrian pass, would pass by it every once in a while. But it was like one of those gated communities. So you'd look inside the gates and you'd be like, dang, those are some nice houses, I guess. But this time, they were given the access code or whatever. Apparently, in this gated community, they would change the access code every single day. And, like, if you had a guest, you'd just give them the right access code. And people who had, like, lived there had accounts you could log in. I don't really... That's unnecessary details, right? So they get the access code. They go to the door. They type it in or whatever. The gate opens up, and they go through. And Adrian is just stunned that houses like the houses he's seeing exist in the neighborhood with him, Right? He's, he's like, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, that's crazy. Like, he, he passes by houses that are three to four times as expensive as his, and he, he doesn't have, like, an inexpensive house necessarily. It's just a very normal, very, very kind of standard American middle-class suburbs type house. But he's going through these, like, mega, these, like, mini mansion type houses. However, it only gets crazier because the spoiled kid doesn't live here. The spoiled kid lives at the very end of this gated community. And it's, it was almost as if, like, the houses became more and more extravagant the farther you went down. Maybe it wasn't as if. Maybe it just simply was that the houses got more and more extravagant the farther you went down. But anyways, you know, Adrian is, like, starts to say stuff to his mom, like, wow, I've never seen any place like this. And Adrian's mom was very quick to be like, hey, make sure you don't say anything about it to the spoiled kid. Yeah, apparently, like, his parents do pretty well, but, you know, it's pretty awkward and it's pretty rude to say anything about money right away. Little does uh, Adrian know that the spoiled kid probably needs to learn this lesson himself. But anyways, they eventually make it to the kind of end of the driveway, in a sense, and they, you know, Adrian's mom's like, oh, well, there it is, like, 722 Plain Street or whatever. I don't freaking know. I'm not going to actually give an actual address, but... Yeah, so Adrian is just looking at this house. And it is the most ridiculous thing he's ever seen. It's got like three, four stories. It's massive. It has a massive driveway with like a big old car garage. It's got a huge pool in the back that you can see spilling out. It's got a crazy, it, it is like the most ridiculous house you've ever seen. Sure, it's not one of those Hollywood mega mansion $20 million houses, but it's the equivalent for a normal, not normal person, but for a non-celebrity type person. Like, this is definitely a house that a CEO of a really big company would live in, right? So Adrian was immediately pretty floored. And uh, his mom's like, hey, man, remember what I said. Don't say anything about it. It's rude. Let's just go in there. Let's meet the kid. So they walk in, or they walk up to the front house. Yeah, they walk up to it. It's not as if they get out of the car and go to the front door. They legitimately walk up this big winding trail to eventually, eventually get to the front door. They knock on it. They wait a second. You hear the, dar the, the barking of two dogs or whatever. The door opens up, and it seems to be the spoiled kid's mom. It's like, oh, says the name of Adrian's mom. Like, oh, so good to meet you. They give, like, the very fake mom hug. I think you guys know what I mean. And then she looks down at Adrian. And it's like, oh, you must be us, your mom's son. She says it. Okay, she's using names, and the way I'm saying it is weird, but you know what I mean. You must be Kathy's son. Let's say her name's Kathy, right? And he's like, yes, like, my name's Adrian. Nice to meet you. 
Um, thanks for having me today. She's like, oh, thanks for coming. I know spoiled kid. He's just really nervous about not making friends. So I, I, I'm sure he's so excited right now to meet you. She yells up, spoiled kid, your friend is here. And then you hear, mom, I'm playing Fortnite. Go away. And you can see the spoiled kid's mom. Her face just goes like very like freaked, like freaked out for a second. And then she, like, almost, like, internally calms herself down. And it's like, oh, he's funny sometimes. He's such a little prankster. And, like, Adrian looks up his mom, and Adrian's mom looks down at him. Because they're kind of exchanging a look of, like, that definitely wasn't no prank, bro. Like, let's be real. This kid is already a menace. Like, I can already tell. So they walk into the house, and when Adrian walks into the house, it is, like, once again, I mean, this is not a surprise at this point, as he's seen the how extravagant the front of the house is, and probably presumably the back is. But once he enters the house, it meets expectations of being the craziest thing he's ever seen. The most ornate, decorated uh, inside of a house he's ever been in. He, like, it's something that you'd see in one of those like celebrity or those crazy house magazines that's like, look at this person, who's richer than you? You will never make this on your salary. <laughs> it's like one of those type of magazines, right, that I kind of question the point of them existing. But yeah, so he walks up and, uh, or he walks like in and uh, the spoiled kid's mom says, oh, spoiled kid's room is just up the stairs. And uh, yeah, you're going to go, you're going to take a left and then you'll probably figure out where it is. So Adrian decides, so Adrian walks up the stairs and he's kind of hearing very faintly and then louder and louder as he approaches kind of like Fortnite gaming noises, right? You know, shooting, building. I didn't play a lot of Fortnite, so my analogies will be a little bit off. But anyways, um, so he goes up the stairs and he kind of hears, he gets closer and closer to a room that, you know, presumably is a spoiled kid's room. He knocks on it, and the spoiled kid says, it's just like, just grunts. The spoiled kid's like, uh. Okay, that's not, don't, don't make that weird, bro. But anyways, he just kind of makes like a weird grunt sound instead of actually responding. But, you know, Adrian wasn't going to wait outside forever, and he also knew for a fact that this was the spoiled kid's room. So he walks into the room, and he sees the spoiled kid behind this massive monitor, right? This very big, massive monitor. You would have thought that this guy was like, an investment banker at like J.P. Morgan Chase or something by the size of these mod, these dual screen monitors. You would have thought that this guy was like some quantitative analysis guy working at a quant fund or something like that. You would have thought that this guy was getting paid six hundred thousand dollars a year to do math models at two sigma, bro. Like this guy is just cranking, crank. He's just building shit in Fortnite, bro. Like it's not a. You don't need this, but whatever, right? He gets into the room. And uh, Adrian is kind of just like, he's completely blown away again, which I mean, he's kind of not blown away because he's expecting it, but he's just once again, couldn't potentially expect this. Blown away by the inside of the spoiled kid's room. Just imagine anything you could ever want, multiply it by three, and then add more stuff that you don't even know that you want in this room. And that is the spoiled kid's room plus some. This thing is the most like extravagant, like kids dream type thing it is has the biggest gaming computer ever huge monitors you got the lego death star you got a huge rack of shoes or whatever you got a big closet that's like very clearly very big um you got everything you got the coolest light setup you got um i don't know charging port for his phone ipad literally everything possible like i, I don't know how to explain it beyond besides just imagine something unimaginable <laughs> That should be easy. Imagine something unimaginable, add two to it, multiply it by seven, and you got the spoiled kid's room. So anyways, you know, uh, Adrian says, hey man, what's good? My name's Adrian. And the spoiled kid doesn't respond to him. He's just playing Fortnite. And he's just like, he's cranking 60s or whatever. I don't know the phrase, sorry. He's just playing a bunch of Fortnite, not paying any attention to the fact that another human being is, is, is in his room. And Adrian's kind of thinking to himself, did this kid just not hear me, or is he ignoring me? And Adrian just kind of, like, thinks about it for a second and says, okay, this kid definitely heard me, because it's not like he had headphones in because the noise was super loud, like, everyone could hear it. And, like, it, he, Adrian said it loud enough that the kid definitely heard. So Adrian just sits there, or stands there, I should say, awkwardly, for five whole minutes, and that's not, like, an exaggeration or saying, like, oh, I stood there for five minutes, legitimately five whole minutes of this kid just playing Fortnite. And eventually he loses. He takes his fist, 
boom, slams on his desk. He's like, you're hacking. And just like turns around is like, oh, uh, hi there. Like, oh, sorry, I forgot you're, you're here. Um, what's good? My name's Spoiled Kid. Um, says his actual name, but my name's Spoiled Kid. What's your name? Brett? Adrian's like, no, it's... It. He's like, okay, whatever. Um, what's good, bro? Like, what do you like to do? And Adrian's just like, <laughs> oh, I'm not Brett, but whatever. He's like, um, I don't know. I like to go uh, hiking. Um, I like the outdoors. I like, you know, spending time with my dog. Uh, I play basketball. And this boy kid's like, okay, cool, whatever. I play golf, Fortnite, and I like driving fast cars. Next. Adrian's like, dude, you're like 14. How do you drive fast cars? He's like, you know, when your dad has a little bit of authority, you know, you can kind of do what you want and not worry about it. And Adrian immediately is like, oh my God, I definitely am not going to like this kid. And he's like, oh, also another thing, huge fan of shoes, big shoe guy. And Adrian's like, oh, cool. Adrian to himself is like, all right, I definitely need to just come up with a conversation like, I just need to come up with something. He's like, okay, um, what kind of shoes do you like? And this boy old kid, like, gets off his chair, walks up to Adrian, looks down at Adrian's shoes, and is like, well, first of all, not those. Adrian's got, like, a standard pair of Nikes. Like, what? The <laughs> Very solid shoes. Very whatever shoes. This boy old kid's like, yeah, definitely not those, bro. Like, what? <laughs> Dude, what? you get this from, like, bottom of the dumpster or something? <laughs> And Adrian's like, what? I, I've had these for like a year. Of course they're not going to be great. But he's like, aha, very funny, dude. Ha ah, ha, you're so funny. Ha ah, ha ha. Adrian immediately knew that him and this kid were not going to get along. But the thing is, you can't just go down and tell his mom, hey, this kid sucks. Sorry, Miss Spoiled Kid. Your son's the worst. We're leaving, right? Can't do that. It's bad etiquette, apparently. Um, not that you know, the, the, the spoiled kid is having great etiquette either, but, you know, Adrian's like, all right, I just got to power through this. Hopefully dinner's sick, and then we'll just dip out of here, and then I will never talk to him again. Cool, whatever. So they have a conversation, or I should say Adrian is being talked to. It's, conversation normally entails that it's both ways, but in this situation, it's literally just Adrian being talked to for, like, 20 minutes about the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid's not even talking. He's simply just bragging. At this point, to be more specific, he's simply bragging. He's just like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty cool. I got, like, this really nice, really nice shoe collection. And by really nice, I mean super sweet. Yeah, you know, I don't really see my dad that much. And, you know, Adrian's like, you're telling me? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, so he just kind of gives me a credit card and I can do whatever I want with it. And if he ever complains, I'm like, well, you're never here, bro. So it's either credit card or you're here. Adrian's like, damn, that's kind of sad. But anyways, this spoiled kid's like, yeah. So I've been buying all these shoes. I've been like spending a lot of money on this stuff, man. I mean, like, take a look at these Air Force, Nike, X, Gucci, whatever's. It, come up with something expensive, right? He's like, yeah, these literally cost half a band, bro. Adrian's like, what? He's like, $500, dummy. And Adrian's just like, oh, what? And he looks at these shoes, and they're like the ugliest things he's ever seen. He's like, bro, what? Just got like a pair of clean Nikes, bro. What are you doing with all this? And the kid's like, yeah, yeah. So these are limited edition. They're exclusive, small batch. Um, you know, I've definitely, like when I was, a couple of days ago, I was walking in the mall. So they had, a, they had a mall around them that was like a fairly popular location. He's like, besides it being super grimy, like I definitely, definitely caught a bunch of diseases from there. A am I right? Adrian's like, okay. He's like, yeah, I was walking around in these, in these bad boys and points to like the Nike Supreme bricks or whatever he's wearing on his feet. And he's like, yeah, you know, I was like walking around in these and like all the, all the chicks, all the baddies, bro, were totally looking at me and them. they were like, whoa. I know those shoes are 500 bucks. Adrian's just like, that's definitely not real. That's not a true story. That's not a true story, man. That's, that's fake news. But he doesn't say that. He's like, oh, for real? You talking to any of them? He's like, no. They totally wanted it, but like, nah, I'm a pass, bro. And Adrian's just looking at this kid. In his head, he's like, this might be the worst kid ever. Like, I thought he's going to suck, but this is just whole new levels, right? I, I guess this is, you know, just whole new levels of just sucking, 
Wow. Okay, cool. Noted. Good to know. I will make sure to tell all my friends how I really feel about you. Anyways, yeah, so the spoiled kid goes on to talk about, you know, shows off some other stuff in his room. He's like, oh, 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 I got something to show you. And Adrian's like, yes. He's like, come on, come on, come on, come with me, come with me. So they walk down the stairs and they pass by the spoiled kid's mom and Adrian's mom sitting there. And Adrian's mom is actually looks like she's having a decent time talking to the spoiled kid's mom. Like they're just talking about mom stuff, like the weather is nice today. I don't know what moms talk about, bro. I don't, I don't know. But anyways, they walk down and Adrian's mom looks over and kind of gives a, or like the spoil, sorry, the spoiled kid's mom looks over and gives the spoiled kid a thumbs up. The spoiled kid's like, shut up, man. And they, <laughs> sorry, they just, and they keep walking. They go out the door and the spoiled kid is taking them around back. He's like, yeah, so I just wanted to like, uh, I thought I'd show you some cool stuff. Like, you definitely don't have access to stuff like this, so you're welcome in advance. Adrian's like, don't punch this kid in the face, bro. Hold it together. Don't drop kick him in the nuts. Just deep breaths. Send meditation or something my mom was telling me. Just hold it together, man. Hold it together. He's like, yeah, so if you want to take a little look over here, and he sh- like, oh, goes over to the garage, goes over, like, types in a pin code or whatever. He's like, you didn't see my code, right? Adrian's like, no. And the spoiled kid's like, you're totally lying. Like, I know you're definitely going to try and lift one of these cars, but don't even try it, bro. Like, they, we, they, they have trackers on all of them, and we will come and get it. Adrian's like, I wasn't going to lift your car. What? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, whatever, man. Uh, anyways, so I know this is a big opportunity for you um, because you probably will never, ever have access to, like, look at these, let alone, like, even get near one ever again. Adrian's like... <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Word, bro. Cool. And this woke. It's like, yeah. So you take a look over here. This is my uh, my uh, dad's Ashton Martin. Got a Mercedes C Class. Got a uh, oh, this this one's not bad. This is a little uh, little sports car over here. It's not too not too bad. He says the name like Ferrari Bugatti. The the cheaper one, the two. They're both like super expensive, but you know what I mean. Like not the, the I think one of them's like crazy crazy, and one of them's like crazy. Um, so he's like, yeah, and there's, like, some other stuff, but, like, you maybe want to uh, sit in one of these cars, and I can take a photo of you in it, so you, for, like, a second, you can be like, oh, man, look at me, guys, I'm in this car, even though it's, like, totally not your car, and you totally will never have one, but if you want to take the photo, I will give you the opportunity, because I'm just nice like that. And spoil, uh, uh, Adrian is just like, oh, my God. This kid's the freaking worst. Yes, you guys might be thinking this kid's pretty bad. Well, let me just say that he goes full mask off. He gets super blatant. And he actually, believe it or not, gets worse. Just literally give it a second, dude. Real quick. Re- God, my voice is broke. Sorry. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, I'll comment spoiled down below. I know it's the same word almost every time. But one of these times, I'm going to change it. And you sneaky, you, you, I'm looking at you, being all sneaky or whatever, you're going to comment spoiled in five minutes into the video, and it's going to be like, potato, and then you're going to look like an idiot. So, always watch till this part of the video. I'll try to hard as many comments I can to say spoiled, as I appreciate you guys making it this far into the video. Uh, Spotify down below, full-length videos are on there. TikTok down below, short-form videos are on there. Follow me in both those places, help the channel out. And finally, the best thing you can do, literally is this after this video, watch another one of my videos. Binge watch or just watch a bunch of my old videos. It really does boost the channel. Easy way to do that is the story time playlist, playlist of all my old stories. Pin comment down below. That all being said, let's just get back to it. Not trying to waste your time. So anyways, right, the spoiled kid. Yes, the spoiled kid. Um, you might be thinking, well, this can't be much worse. Like, this kid sucks. You're not wrong. This kid does suck. But it does get worse. Like, I, I, I hate to break it to you, but this kid actually finds a way to somehow get worse. And, uh, yeah, you're about to see that. So, anyways, eventually Adrian and the kid go back upstairs. He's like, all right, well, they walk up to his room. And the spoiled kid's like, yeah, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll some fort right now. You can, like, stand there or something. Just don't break anything because I will make you pay for it. Which is like, bro, what? Yeah, so... <laughs> This, this guy's just standing in the spo- just standing in his room as a spoiled kid watches him. And uh, 
yeah, he's just kind of like standing there watching the kid play Fortnite. And that's when the kid's mom, the spoiled kid's mom, yells down saying, boys, dinner time, or whatever, you know, they're saying, whatever, right? And uh, the spoiled kid's like, mom, I'm playing Fortnite. <laughs> it's like, just completely taking it out on her for no good reason. And, you know, Adrian's just standing there so awkwardly. Because he's like, yeah, you know, my mom and I have gotten into disagreements before, but I'd never take it out. Like, I'd never do something like that. And I 100% agree with Adrian. Like, that's ridiculous. Can't be yelling at your mom like that. I really don't care what it's about, bro. Even if she's doing something a little messed up, you gotta sit down, say it politely, say it nicely. You gotta, come on. There's no other way, man. Anyways, though, so Adrian's just staying there really awkwardly because he's like, man, I can't disrespect. I'd never disrespect my mother like that. If you have to learn one thing from the Connor Pugs YouTube channel, just be nice to your parents, right? Respect them for what they've done, unless in very few situations, then there, there's always exceptions to rules, but generally, accept that as a rule. Generally, remember, I'm saying generally. Anyways, though, yeah, so Adrian is just standing there, and this guy, this spoiled kid, is, he's actually all right at Fortnite, well, because he spends all this time playing it. So the game goes on for another five minutes, and the spoiled kid's mom once again yells up to them, being like, hey, your uh, dinner's getting cold. And he's like, shut up, mom. Shut up. And, like, Adrian's just standing there so stunned because the first time was aggressive, but this was, like, low-key out of left field aggressive. Like, this, this was kind of crazy aggressive, right? So, uh, yeah, you know, and I'm sure the spoiled kid's mom was, like, super embarrassed in front of Adrian's mom being like, oh, how did you raise your son? Does he do this to you? He doesn't? Oh, that's interesting. You know what I mean? So yeah, Adrian is standing there, and then eventually the spoiled kid loses, and he literally takes his mouse and throws it against the wall, and it, like, explodes into a million pieces. And this is definitely, like, a $100 mouse or something. And, you know, he's like, ah, that guy was so cheating, bro. And Adrian's like, oh my god, like, do you have another mouse or something? Spoiled kid's yeah, like, I got 15, I break them all the time. And he literally walks over to a drawer, opens it up, and there's, like, $1,500 mouses. You know that you're a spoiled kid, right? When you buy 15, like $1,500 worth of watches, watches, sorry, $1,500 worth of mice because you break your mouse so often that you just need to like, you need to have 15 on hand at all time. Like that's, that's the mark of the spoiled kid right there. But it gets worse. Yep, it gets worse. So eventually spoiled kid and uh, Adrian walk down and at the dinner table, there is like, I don't know, some kind of meal in the center, and it looks really good. It's like a very fire meal. So, like, you know, they're going around passing it down, and the spoiled kid's mom's like, so, Adrian, tell me about yourself. Like, whatever, right? Adrian's like, yeah, my name's Adrian. I like, uh, you know, going outside, playing time, time with my dog, basketball. She's like, oh, spoiled kid used to do basketball in second grade with his little buddies. And the spoiled kid's like, yeah, I don't do it anymore because it's, like, so stupid or whatever. I'd rather play Fortnite in cars. And he's, like, literally on his phone the whole time, by the way. So for the next duration of this kind of, like, conversation, Spoiled Kid's on his phone. Like, he's not paying any attention, or he's paying at least half attention, right? So, yeah, sure enough, um, you know, eventually uh, the, the Spoiled Kid's mom's like, so, uh, tell me a little bit about your school. The Spoiled Kid uh, mutters under his breath, poor person school, oh, this, is, this should be so great. <laughs> Whatever. And, like, everyone heard it. Like, he didn't mutter it under his breath in a way that people didn't hear it. He muttered it under his breath in a way that everyone heard it. <laughs> so, like, Spoiled Kid's mom, her face just goes, like, drops again. Just like, oh, my God. And, uh, yeah, um, Adrian's mom was kind of a little shocked because besides... The first thing she ever heard the Spoiled Kid say that was pretty crazy was yelling at his mom, you know. And this, she's like, okay. Adrian is, like, kind of trying to take this comment in stride, Right? It's like, yeah, um, it's cool. A lot of good people there. You know, teachers are fine. You know, school is nice enough. The spoiled kid's like, I bet the school sucks and it's ugly. Because all uh, the poor are there. <laughs> and you know, Adrian looks over at him like, bro, we can hear you. <laughs> like, I know you know that we can hear you, but... You're almost as acting as if, like, you're talking to some, like, audience that doesn't hear. Like, what, what, why? And Adrian just kind of looks at him, the spoiled kid's mom, has this, like, big smile on her face, like, <laughs> don't listen to my son. 
he does not represent me or my family, right? And she's like, oh, that's so great. Um, yeah, t- tell me about your school. Like, what do you guys have there? And he's like, oh, so we got, like, basketball court. Um, uh, what else do we have, Mom? And, you know, Adrian's mom's like, oh, well, you guys got a park or something. Spoiled kid's like, but you guys got a crap-ass park. Lol. <laughs> They're all just looking at him like, bro, shut up. And uh, he's like, uh, basketball court? <laughs> Figures, bro. Do you guys not even have, like, golf course or something? And Adrian looks at him. It's like, bro, we do not have a golf course at our school. What? This this is, like, high school or middle school, bro. <laughs> Wait, what middle school did you go to, dude? And he's like, uh, he's like, whatever. I'll get used to it. Uh, everyone has to make sacrifices, I guess. And uh, conversation goes on. More details I don't really need to give you. But at some point, right, the spoiled kid... Like, turns his mom. He's like, Mom, do I really... Can, can, can you not just, like, put me in some, like, private school or something? Like, please? Or can you just, like, homeschool me so I can play Fortnite all the time? She's like, no. Your dad and I both went to our local public schools, and it was a great foundational period. We learned a lot about character. We, la- we made some of our best friends. Like, I, I, I will... I, I, we think it's important for you. And they start having this whole conversation, right? While Adrian and his mom are awkwardly sitting at the table. And he's like, Mom, I've told you this before, but it makes me really uncomfortable when I have to sit next to people who are of a lower socioeconomic status as us. And, like, Adrian and his mom are just looking at each other like, Bro. Bro. He just said that. Dude just, dude just went full mask off. Yo, yeah, yeah. So and like Adrian's mom is like, or sorry, spoiled kid's mom is like, you will not speak like that when we have guests at the table, implying that, yeah, speak like that when we don't have guests at the table. It's totally chill. We love saying stuff like that around here. That's us. That's what we claim, right? Like what? But anyways, um, spoiled kid's like, mom, you know what? You you always telling me to like, I should express myself and I should say what I'm thinking. And I, she's like, I, I don't say, and she, he's like, you know what, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking Adrian over here. And Adrian's like, oh God, it's looking real poor right now. And Adrian's Bob just like, his, her face is like, bro, what? And Adrian, Adrian's low-key just laughing at this point. He's just laughing because he knows this kid's the worst. He knows this kid sucks. And he knows this kid has a long way to go to fix his character. So he's a, he's just dancing, bro. He's just laughing. He's just, he's josh he's goofing around right now like he doesn't he honestly doesn't care because it's like the funniest thing he's ever said or ever heard because like look adrian doesn't care adrian's comfortable in his life he's happy with who he is and he gets to watch this spoiled kid kid have a meltdown because he doesn't have as much money as him like that's the goofiest thing ever plus it makes for a great story and adrian's mom or spoiled kid's mom's like you will not speak like that to our guests they came all the way over here and we are grateful for them to come aren't we? And he's like, they should be grateful for us. I mean, look, I showed Adrian over here some like some really sick shoes and some really sick cars. I know for a fact that with like his, <coughs> sorry, I know for a fact that with like his money situation that he would not be ever setting foot anywhere near this car. So like, they should be thanking us. And it's woke his mom's like, I do not want you at this dinner table anymore. Spoiled kid's like, good, I'll go play some Fortnite. He literally gets up, knocks over his glass on purpose, and walks upstairs. The spoiled kid's mom is just sitting there. And she's just like, I don't, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, right? Adrian's mom's like, it's okay. And she's like, no, it's not. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know what's gotten into him. Maybe I should bring him on Dr. Phil because that will fix all problems and definitely not just air interpersonal, inner family issues that don't actually get fixed uh, just for views or whatever. But I don't know what to do. And Adrian's mom's like, well, I think you're doing the right thing by sending him to like public school. Like obviously he's going to have to learn a thing or two about life. Um, look, you still got a chance to stick with it. Look, I'm here to help if you need anything. I do think we're going to go, though. And she's like, I totally get it. So Adrian and Adrian's mom get into the car. And Adrian's like, why are you so nice to his mom at the end? And Adrian's mom, or Adrian's mom is like, 
You know, the spoiled kid might have been super awful, dude, but I don't know if she said dude. She's probably like, spoiled kid, I know he was the worst, but, you know, his mom seems really nice. She just seems overwhelmed by the whole situation. And when people are struggling like that, you know, it's always good to reach out and help them. And, you know, at this point, what's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? I either, either the worst has happened and not, is nothing changes. The best that happens is I can actually give some guidance and spoil kid's mom can f- fix his character because it's definitely not so great right now. And uh, Adrian kind of agreed. And the uh, moral of the story is, I think the morals of this are so obvious, like, don't be that kid, bro. Like, if, if you don't get that from the story... Click on the video on screen right say. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Look, in my opinion, it's never okay to shame someone for something that they can't control. However, it seems like nowadays, if a guy is under 6 foot 11, they can be shamed and called ugly for something that they genuinely cannot control. In today's story time, this Gen Z girl calls every kid in her class who is under six feet ugly and worthless. It's absolutely crazy, so sit back, relax, and let's jump right into the story. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Billy. So anyways, in Billy's class, there was this Gen Z girl. This Gen Z girl spent all of her time on Twitter, as the Gen Z girls do. And by the way, when I say Gen Z girl, I, I use that as like... I don't know, a saying, and I don't mean literally anyone in Gen Z, because I'm technically in Gen Z. It's kind of just a saying for people who spend way too much time on Twitter and TikTok and cancel bread and all, all this wonderful stuff, right? So she spends way too much time on TikTok and Twitter and has come to the belief that uh, all women are queens, all men are terrible, and if a man is under six feet tall, that he is not worth her time. By the way, dude, they're all in eighth grade. Billy's in eighth grade. She's in eighth grade. A lot of guys haven't even hit their growth spurts. Let me admit something to you guys. I am 5'10 to 5'11 on a good day. I am not six feet tall and I will never be. I am basically done growing in that direction, dude. So uh, yeah, even like uh, most kids will not be six feet statistically. And in Billy's class, there was one kid, one kid alone who was like six feet, but barely six feet. And he was like the star basketball player or whatever. Every other kid in Billy's class was under six feet tall because, bro, they're in eighth grade. Like, even the ones that are going to be six feet tall are just not six feet tall yet. I don't know why this is so difficult for people to understand. But one day in class, the Gen Z girl was, like, going around where, like, sat with a bunch of, like, other girlfriends. And Billy was overhearing a conversation that they were having. This conversation went about as follows. So this is the Gen Z girl. Girls, I want to let you know that you should never, ever talk to a guy who's under six feet. They're trash, they're worthless, and we are queens and better. And all the other girls are like, yes, like, you're so right, preach, clap, 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 snap, whatever. I don't even know, dude. And, uh, (laughs) you know, Billy overhears this, and Billy's sitting at, like, 5'4", but remember, Billy's in eighth grade. First of all, nothing wrong with being 5'4", but also Billy's probably going to grow to be a little bit taller, but... He's also very much not six feet, and everyone else in his class is very much not six feet, except for that one basketball player. So Billy overhears this, and he's kind of like, well, I mean, it's not like I was going to go for the Gen Z girl anyways. I don't need a lecture about how my existence is offensive or something, because that's probably what was going to happen. Yeah, but uh, sure enough, you know, the Gen Z girl, what she starts to do is she starts to go around, like, talking to all the girls in the class, and she starts to try and convince every single one that all men under six feet tall are worthless and ugly and you should never date them and that they're all the garbage. And the thing is, some look, these are eighth grade girls, eighth graders, right? You can be easily manipulated into believing basically anything. But there were a handful of girls who were like, what? Like, first of all, no, there's more characteristics. Like, I do care about height. I don't necessarily, like, the girls would be like, a lot of them would be like, You know, some of them would be like, I don't care. Some of them would be like, I don't know, I prefer a guy to be taller than me, but six feet? Like, I'm 5'0 myself. Like, why would I care, dude? Um, If a kid is not literally an entire foot taller than me, if anything, that might make it more difficult. But unfortunately, a lot of girls were falling for the Gen Z girls. 
I don't know, her brainwashing or whatever. Because the Gen Z girl would be like, don't believe me? Watch this informative video. And it's like a TikTok video of someone being like, Distri all men should be executed. And I'm also if they're under six feet, they're ugly. Yeah, so a lot of stuff like that. And all the other girls would be like, oh, wow, this is so facts, dude. OMG. So yeah, slowly but surely, the Gen Z girl was turning all the girls away and the fir from all the guys, basically. And the first real instance of this becoming an issue was when uh, Billy had a friend and his friend was Ben. We're going to call him Ben, right? So Ben had this thing for this girl. And uh, maybe this girl deciding that because Ben is not six feet, deciding to like be like L ratio, maybe that says a little bit more about the girl than anything. But Billy, oh, sorry, not Billy. Ben was talking with this girl for a while. And here's the deal. She was actually in the Ben. Like, things were going to become legit. I mean, as legit as, like, I don't know, eighth grade relationships can get. Actually, I had a fire eighth grade relationship. Happiest spring I've had in a while. So, yeah, they can be legit. Maybe 10th base is holding hands and even as risque, but I don't know. It's still a fun time to be alive. Yeah, but uh, anyways, so things were going really well for Ben until one day this girl just stopped showing interest. So Ben and Billy were friends. And Ben and Billy would talk at lunch every single day about Billy be like, yo, dude, what's going on with the girl? Like, is that going well, bro? And he'd be like, yeah, like, I've heard really good things. We're really talking to each other. I've heard from her friends that she wants to escalate this to like a full on relationship, which, which was a pretty big deal, especially for eighth grade. I think it, it's always a big deal. That stuff's always fun. That stuff never gets boring. But uh, yeah, one day, you know, Billy sits down and Ben sits down and Ben's like, dude, she's like completely cut me off and I don't know what I did. And, uh, I mean, this isn't, like, an uncommon thing. Like, guys are just completely oblivious to what happens around them. I'm speaking from experience. I am CEO of being oblivious, bro. But, yeah, so at first Ben's like, oh, or Billy's like, oh, dude, like, Ben, did you just, like, did you say something? Did you, like, not say something? Like, it was her birthday and you just missed it. And he's like, dude, I, don't, I really don't think so. And that's when another guy sat, sits down and says, dude, like, Ben, I'm so sorry, bro. And Ben's like, wait, what are you sorry about? He's like, I heard it's not going well with what's her face. And, you know, Ben's like, bro, like, how did you hear? Like, I, I, I haven't told anyone besides Billy and Billy's sitting right here. And he's like, oh yeah, you didn't tell me. And Billy didn't tell me, dude, I just, I just heard. And Ben's really confused because how does this random guy know that it's not going well with this like girl that he's talking to? So that's when this random guy explains that basically word has gotten around that the Gen Z girl has like converted 80% of the girls in the class to reject all men that are under six feet tall. And that the girl that Ben was talking to was converted as well. And that she has been instructed by the Gen Z girl to not speak to Ben until he becomes six feet tall. And Ben's like, dude, what? Because, yeah, Ben's like 5'5", five five, which is a total fine, totally fine height. But also in eighth grade, he's probably going to grow taller. There's like a chance, like a, probably a one in two, one in three chance, he will approach, if not surpass, six feet when he actually has a real growth spurt, dude. Like, I don't understand. Like, it's stupid. I mean, look, people are allowed to have their preferences, but I don't know. It just seems so stupid, especially for eighth grade. And this is like, Ben's getting mad because he's like, dude, I was doing so well with this girl before, like, this nonsense, like, oh, I have to be six feet came in, bro. And, you know, the guy's like, yeah, dude, it really sucks. Like, this one girl is just, like, converted all the girls in our class against us. Like, the Gen Z girl really is just, like, she, she's the op, bro. She's against us, dude. Like, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so Ben is pretty upset because things were going really well. So they get into class, and Ben, Billy, and the Gen Z girl, they all have class, second class after lunch. So they all have class together. So they all sit down, and when they walk into class, Ben and Billy walk into class together, they see all the girls in the back huddled around the Gen Z girl, and they're watching some TikTok video on the Gen Z girl's phone about, like, ladies, this is why we don't need men at all, unless they're over six feet tall and make seven million dollars a year. So basically, if you guys know any men that are under six feet tall, tell them that they are worthless to society, right? So, and, and, and all the girls are like, yes, this makes a lot of sense. Yes. And all the guys are just kind of sitting there like, bro, what? So eventually class begins. And the teacher's like, all right, guys, like, it's a group project. 
I'm going to step out for a second because basically they were paired up in groups and they had a kind of a week long assignment that they had to do. And the teacher's like, today's a work period, like a class period to just to do work with your projects or your teams. And if you have any questions, I will be in and out of class. I got to like make copies or whatever. But whenever I come back, feel free to ask me questions. So the teacher left class for the majority of the class. And when the teacher was back, it was very sparingly. So that's when like, I don't know, I think Ben was just mad. So Ben like gets up and he walks over to the Gen Z girl's table. And the Gen Z girl is like, hi, shorty. What's up, small guy? And he's like, what? She's like, yeah, you heard me. You're under six feet, so you're worthless. And all the girls are like, oh. And Ben's like, dude, what? And at this point, Billy's like, oh, no, this is not going to be good. Because Billy knew that Ben was notorious for going off on people. Like, Ben was a good dude, and Billy liked him. Like, they were boys. But also, like, Ben had no chill. Like, if someone was doing something and they needed to be called out, or even if they didn't need to be called out. That was the problem. Sometimes he would literally just be ruthless to the wrong people. Like, just just for the sake of being ruthless, he would sometimes just, just be absolutely ruthless, bro. Yeah, so uh, sure enough, you know, Ben's like, well, like, what are you saying right now? And she's like, oh, are you coming over me? Because you're mad that the girl that was, like, falsely in love with you, I got her out of it. Like, you know what? I dodged her a bullet, like... You are so under six feet right now. I I'm honestly gagging. Am I right, ladies? And they all start laughing. So at this point, Ben is being humiliated in front of the entire class for something that is out of his control. Look, you're allowed to have preferences. I honestly don't care. If, for example, if you're a girl who's watching this and you will only date men or women that are above six feet, that's fine. Like, you're allowed to have your preferences. If you want to date literally no one but one specific person, I do not care. However, that is a completely different story from publicly shaming someone for not fitting within those preferences, right? Uh, that is a completely different story, unless, you know, the shaming is for different reasons. For example, if someone's like a bad person or is doing something bad, that shaming is okay. But that's not shaming because they don't fit within your preferences. That's shaming for a different reason. But to shame someone, one, because they don't fit within your preferences, and two, because of something they literally, physically cannot control, I mean, bro, you're kind of asking for trouble. And so anyways, Ben, Ben is about to go off on her. Ben is about to uh, get himself in a little bit of trouble as well, because the teacher is walking in as Ben is going off on this girl. Basically, here's, here's the deal. The Gen Z girl is a little, uh... Chungus Among Us. She's a, she's a little uh, bigger than the average person, which is fine. Which is fine, right? Who cares, bro? Live your life. However, in Ben's mind, she was coming after him for a characteristic that he cannot control. So he should be able to go after her for a characteristic that is difficult to control, but possible, right? It is technically possible to change your weight within bounds, but it is impossible to change your height after you grow. Sure, you can do stretches to like get an extra quarter inch out of your spine, but bro, not, not really, not really. And uh, yeah, Ben was about to fight fire with fire and he was unleashing the flamethrower, flame. The secret word of the day is flame. So if you made it this far into the video, comment flame down below. I like to see how many people made it this far. And also if you check the pin comment on this video, you'll see a link to the Spotify, which all these story audios are on Spotify as a podcast, so listen on there. And then also a link to both my meme channel and my Reddit story channel. I upload on both those channels every single day. Please go ahead and subscribe. I'm starting both of those from a very low number, so you guys watching means even more on those channels, and I genuinely think you'll enjoy the content. Anyways, let's get back to it. So Ben is about to go off on the Gen Z girl as the teacher is walking back in. So pretty tough timing. So as the, t as the Gen Z girl, right, is like sitting there calling him short and how he's such a shorty and the reason why the girl doesn't like him anymore is because I convinced her that you're worthless because you're short. And as the teacher's walking in, Ben is like, I'm not going to take crap from a literal beluga whale like you. And the whole class goes silent. Disclaimer. Don't make fun of people's appearances, whether that be for your weight or your height or other reasons. 
I'm just telling the story. So the entire class goes silent, and the Gen Z girl is so mad. She's like, I didn't like... I'm not taking disrespect from someone short like you. And literally like runs out of the class. And Ben's like, what I do? And the teacher was like, Ben, you are not allowed to speak like your, to your fellow classmates with such disrespect like that. Go to the principal's office. And that's when, you know, Billy speaks up and says, yeah, like Mr. Teacher, right? Ben messed up, but you know, he was called like short. Like she was like making fun of him for being short, saying that he was, like, unlovable and worthless, and the teacher's like, I don't care, whatever, like, that literally doesn't matter, like, Ben, go to the front office now. So now I'm going to tell a bit of the story from Ben's POV, his perspective. So Ben is walking to the front office, and he's walking in steaming, and he's very upset, because he overheard, like, he heard the teacher say, it doesn't matter that you were called short and worthless, you called a girl fat, which you can't be doing, you cannot be doing, and I want to say, I do not endorse anyone doing that. Even if you're called a bad, even if someone calls you something bad, don't call them something bad back because then you're basically as bad as them. But Ben, if he was going to be punished, wanted at least equal punishment. He wanted at least equal treatment. So he goes to the principal's office and he sits down. And the principal is like, like, son, your teacher just called me. And apparently he called one of your classmates a beluga whale. <laughs> and Ben's like, lol. <laughs> And he's like, son, that's not very funny. Like, that's not a funny thing to do. Like, you know, girls have a lot of self-esteem issues. You cannot be doing that. Like, I mean, we're looking at probably a day of in-school suspension for that, which that's a little harsh. I'm not going to lie. That's a little harsh. But I guess that was the punishment. So Ben's like, okay, like, I accept my punishment. However, I don't think I should be the only one punished here. And the teacher's like, oh, like, do say, like, what do you mean by that? And Ben's like, well, the girl I said that to, which I guess in retrospect was wrong of me to say to, the only reason I did was because I was getting mad because in front of the entire class, she was saying that because I am under six feet, that I will never be loved and that I am worthless, a terrible individual, and that I'm ugly beyond compare, right? And the principal is just looking at Ben. And the principal stares at Ben and looks at him and laughs. And the principal is like, oh, Ben. You think I'm going to get her in trouble for that? You really think that's comparable? And Ben is looking at the principal like, what? Like, are these not the same crimes just committed by different people? Huh? Yeah, so the next day, uh, Ben's not in school. And the day after that, you know, eventually Billy finds Ben. is like, dude, like, what happened? Like, are you good? And uh, basically Ben goes on to say, dude, I got one day of in-school suspension. He's like, okay, well, I saw the girl yesterday. She's just getting suspension later. And that's when... Ben goes on to say, Billy, dude, no. The principal literally laughed at me when I said that, like, what she did, and I asked her to get punished. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that was the ruling that the school gave for this. Guys, sometimes life is unfair, and this is an example. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. Today, we have a story time of a Minecraft kid who thinks that Minecraft is real, that the real world is Minecraft, and that there is no difference at all. I know you'll enjoy it, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's jump right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Alex. So anyways, Alex had to go babysit his cousin, and Alex really didn't want to spend his weekend babysitting his cousin, but at the end of the day, what choice did Alex have? I mean, Alex's mom's like, bro, you're going to do it. And when your mom tells you to do something, I don't know about you, but you just got to do it, man. You just got to do it. Anyway, so Alex heads over to his cousin's house. It's about like a 20-minute walk from his house because they live in pretty much the same area. So it's not that big of a deal. But he gets over there, and Alex's cousin were actually... Okay, so we're going to call throughout the rest of this video Minecraft Kid equals Alex's cousin. So when I say the Minecraft Kid, I'm speaking about Alex's cousin. So anyways, the Minecraft Kid's mom gets to the door, Alex's aunt, and she's like, Alex, thank you so much for coming. Like, I know this is on super short notice, I'm so sorry about that. There's just really nothing. Like, I, I needed someone to come, and I was posting on Facebook, and your mom offered you, look, I will be paying you. And Alex was kind of thinking to himself, oh, word, like, I'm getting paid. Like, this actually isn't the worst deal ever. And, yeah, so she's like, I'm so sorry about that. Like, look, um, I know you haven't seen your cousin in a second because Alex's little cousin, the Minecraft kid, was, like, seven And Alex was like 15, so they didn't really have a lot in common. Believe it or not, the 7-year-olds and the 15-year-olds don't really have a lot in common. I mean, Alex might be like, yo, dude, this girl's super hot. He's like, what's a girl, bro? Like, isn't that just a guy with long hair? 
But yeah, anyways, uh, one thing they might have in common is they both kind of like Minecraft. However, the Minecraft kid likes it to a little bit of a different extreme. So anyways, Alex's aunt, like, is, you know, at the door talking to him, and that's when the Minecraft kid, aka Alex's, uh, cousin, walks down the stairs. And Alex's, uh, aunt turns around and says, Oh, perfect, Minecraft kid, says his name, but Minecraft kid, like, you remember your cousin, right? And, you know, Alex kind of looks at him, gives kind of like a smile, very forced, but whatever, but gives a smile and waves. And, bro, his little cousin doesn't even wait a second, doesn't introduce himself, doesn't ask how he's doing, doesn't say, wow, what fine weather we have outside. He goes right on to saying, do you believe Minecraft is real? Like, this is the opener, bro. Like, I've heard of a lot of pretty crazy pickup lines, but I kind of feel like this is a whole new level. Like, imagine just, like, your, your introduction to seeing someone who you haven't seen in years, even though you live pretty close. You haven't seen them in years. Your introduction to seeing them is asking them if they believe if Minecraft, the video game, very good game, by the way. I mean, I play in the background of almost all my videos. But if that game is real, yeah, that's how we started the whole thing off. So Alex kind of looks at his little cousin suspiciously, not suspiciously, but just kind of looking at him like, bro, what did you say? Like, what? And, you know, his little cousin's like, yeah, like, dude, do you think Minecraft is real or not? Alex is once again giving him a look of like, bro, I don't know what you're saying right now. Like, I really don't believe I'm hearing what you're saying correctly because you're saying some non you're saying some goofy nonsense right now. But Alex goes on to say, like, all right, in his head, he's like, all right, this kid's, like, seven or whatever. He probably believes, like, I don't know, the fairy princess that, like, I don't know, gives him, uh, I, like, he probably believes a lot of things, right? Like, oh, my God, like, uh, Star Wars is real, too, and uh, Disney characters are real, so whatever, right? Alex goes on to say, uh, he, he doesn't, like, play into it, because Alex had an option of being like, yeah, sure, which he probably should have done in retrospect, as you'll see later on in the story. But he's like... Yeah, no, it's, I don't think Minecraft is real, man, but it's a really great game. One would have thought that that would have been a totally fine response. Like, one would have thought that if you said that, that you would have been off the hook. Like, who cares, right? Maybe you don't think Minecraft is the greatest game ever. However, you enjoy the game. You give it, you know, what it's worth. You know, you give it the respect it deserves. However, the Minecraft kid, a.k.a. his little cousin, you could just see in his face. His face turns sour immediately. He just comes into this big, angry frown. He's like, what do you mean you don't think Minecraft is real? Like, of course it's real. There's trees in Minecraft, and there's trees in real life. There's grass in Minecraft, and there's grass in real life. Prove me wrong. And Alex was literally just went on to say, well... There are dragons in Minecraft, and there's no dragons. And that's when, you know, the Minecraft kid, a.k.a. his little cousin, bursts into laughter. He's like, of course there are dragons. They're just, of course there were dragons. They just went extinct. Why do you think we see them all the time in movies and stuff? And Alex is kind of looking at him like, is, is, that, is that your reasoning? Because you've seen them in movies, therefore it's true. Because movies would never lie. Nope, they would never lie. And if you believe so, you're officially a hater. No, but uh, Al eventually Alex is like, all right, man, maybe Minecraft is real. He's not trying to make the kid mad. And this whole time, Alex's aunt, a.k.a. the mother of the Minecraft kid, is kind of just standing there awkwardly like, um, I, should I intervene? Like, uh, should I say something? Like, this is definitely very weird, but... Do, do I, do I say something? No, no, okay, okay. Yeah, so she kind of said, all right, well, um, guys, have fun tonight. Gotta go. Alex, here's my number if you need anything. You know, there's a pizza in the fridge. Just slap in the microwave or put in the oven for 20 minutes or something. We'll be back. Call me if you need anything. She gets out the door and leaves. So Alex is kind of staying there, a little bit awkward, like, uh, okay. And the Minecraft kid says, hey, we got a pool in the back if you'd like to go. And Alex is like, okay, word, sure. Because Alex was like, dude, what am I going to do with this kid? If I, I feel like if I say anything, he's going to get mad at me. Because Alex was like, I literally just said that Minecraft, the video game, doesn't exist in real life. And this kid flipped out on me. Like, what am I, legitimately, what am I supposed to do at this point? Like, what can, what can I do, bro? I can't say anything right. Yeah, but anyways, um, you know, the, he, Alex was pretty excited to hear, okay, 
we got something to do. So the Minecraft kid ran upstairs and put on his swim trunks or whatever. And Alex didn't bring any swimming clothes because, you know, he didn't think he was going to go swimming. It had been such a long time since he went to his little cousin's house that, you know, he actually completely forgot that they had a pool. So they go out there. And, you know, Alex is like, all right, ma'am, I'm going to sit here. You can have fun or whatever. Because Alex's plan was, you know, maybe drag this out a little bit. Let him play by himself in his pool or whatever for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Alex can go on his phone, maybe watch some videos, maybe get, hop on a call with some friends. I, I don't know. He can do a lot of things, right? However, he goes out there and he watched the Minecraft kid jump into the pool. And the Minecraft kid went underwater. Because, you know, when you go in the water, you can swim around, you can swim under it, you can do a lot of things. However, the Minecraft kid was not coming up above the water. So immediately, Alex is like, oh, shoot. Alex rips off his shirt, like, keeps his, like, pants on. He bro Bro's got shorts, right? But these aren't, like, wa I think, thankfully, right? These are, like, kind of gym shorts. But at the same time, these aren't swim shorts. He's really not trying to jump in, but his little cousin is not looking like he's coming up. So Alex is not letting a kid drown on his watch. No chance. So Alex just like takes his phone out of his pocket, takes his wallet out, jumps in, scoops his little cousin up and brings him above the surface. His little cousin's like, oh, oh, oh. Alex is like, what happened? So at this point, Alex is in the water. So he's, I've scooped him up. And the Minecraft kid's like, oh, oh, I was trying to press space, but I wasn't going up. And Alex is like, bro, what? And that's when he remembered that in Minecraft, in Minecraft, if you're underwater, if you hold space, I'm pretty sure if you hold space, if you hold space, you'll start to float to the surface. And if you don't, you'll sink. So the Minecraft kid's like, I was holding space. I was holding space in real life. I was holding space in real life. Why didn't it work? And Alex is kind of just looking at him with this look of bro. You cannot be serious right now. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment Minecraft down below. Leave a like on the video for your free nothing as well. I will try and heart all the comments to say Minecraft. Uh, if I got the time, I'll do it. And if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is after this video, watch another one of my videos. I'm going to link a story time playlist in the pinned comment or just watch another one of my videos. Anyways, so Alex tries to explain to this kid that, uh, first of all, what does he even mean by hold space in real life? Like, what do you mean you're holding space? Or maybe it's shift. I don't know. One of those two. And he's like, the Minecraft kid's like, I don't know, but I was definitely doing it. And Alex is like, all right, well, this is the real life. This is not Minecraft. To swim up, you need to push your arms and push the water upwards. And Alex is like, but, but Minecraft is real life. At this point, Alex is like, all right, this kid's a lost cause. He's like, okay, I think we should go inside. So yeah, sure enough, they're going inside. And uh, the, little, the, the little cousin, a.k.a. the Minecraft kid, he's looking extra angry right now. He's looking very upset. And Alex thinks to himself, well, he's obviously very upset because, I don't know, I, I took him out of the water early. And Loki, Alex was a little bit upset about that too because Bro was trying to go in the water as well. I mean, it, I mean I'm not, I'm not, he wasn't trying to go in the water as well, but Bro was trying to sit outside while the Minecraft kid was in the water because it was easy. He could go on his phone, and he had no idea what he was going to do to entertain the Minecraft kid for the next couple hours. Entertaining kids was not a specialty, man. So anyways, they walk inside. He puts the pizza in the oven. The Minecraft kid is just sitting on the table. His arms are crossed, and he's got this big pouty face. So Alex is like, all right, buddy, what's up? Like, I see you got a face. You got a little expression going. Tell me, what did I do? What happened? At this point, you know, Alex is just like, all right, let's just, let's at least figure out what's going on. And that's when the Minecraft kid says, I can't believe what you said earlier. And Alex is trying to recall right now. He's like, okay, did I say something like offensive or something? And Alex was like thinking about it and thinking about it. He's like, what? No, I didn't, I didn't say anything. What? And the Minecraft kid's like, you know what you said. He starts sniffling a little bit. And Alex is starting to get really like uncomfortable. He's like, Dude, like, what did I say to this kid to make him cry? Like, what? And the dude's like, you know, some of us, some of us just believe. And Alex is like, dude, what did I say? What did I say? Like, I, he's like, he's just searching his brain, his memory for like, what could he have possibly said to bring this kid to tears hours later? He's like, you know what? You're wrong. Minecraft is real. 
And at this point, Alex is like, bro, there is no way that this kid is this upset over the fact that I said that Minecraft wasn't real. What? Bro, it's a video game. Chill out. Are you what? Yeah, so Alex was just kind of like, bro, what, what, what is bro doing over here? Like, this is, like, this is crazy, bro. Like, are you serious right now? And he's like, dude, I didn't. And so Alex is like, all right, let me play along with it. He's like, bro, I didn't mean it like that. Minecraft, a lot of parts of Minecraft are real. Like, the Minecraft trees, those are real. Like, trees really do exist. Grass in Minecraft, it does exist in the real life. All I'm saying is, you know, there's just not creepers walking around that are going to blow up in your face. I'm just saying that's not true, and there aren't zombies. Don't, they, those don't exist, right? But a lot of Minecraft is real. So, you know what? You're right. Minecraft is mostly real. Because Alex wasn't going to tell this kid that zombies, dragons, uh, real-life skeletons that shot you with bows and arrows, he's not about to tell this kid that those things actually exist. Because he's not trying to be, you know, he doesn't want, like, to get an angry call from his aunt saying, you traumatized my boy and told him that zombies were going to eat his face off. He, he just didn't want that call, man. You know what? I can respect that. I can understand that. However, the Minecraft kid, you know, Alex was expecting the Minecraft kid's face to change. He expected the Minecraft kid's face to light up and be like, oh, he agrees with me now. Perfect, like everything in the universe is right again. But no, the Minecraft kid's face still has this grumpy look on it. Alex is so confused. He's like, well, I, I said Minecraft was real. And the Minecraft kid's like, no, you said some of Minecraft is real. All of it is real. The whole thing is real. And he crosses his arms. He's like, meh. And Alex is like, all right, you know what? We're going to have to agree to disagree. Because Alex just wasn't about to tell this kid that zombies and dragons were actually real. He just wasn't about to do that. Like, he was very close to doing that. But he was just not about to do that, bro. Like, that would just be stretching his limits like crazy. So eventually, he hears the ding of the pizza. So Alex is like, all right, well, the uh, pizza's ready. Goes over to the oven, takes it out, puts it on, like, the stove or whatever, and is, you know, preparing to, like, cut it up. And that's when he turns around to see that the Minecraft kid has completely disappeared. He's like, oh, my God, what? What now? And he kind of, like, walks around. He's like, hey, Minecraft kid, where pizza's ready, you should come down. Doesn't it smell really good? You should come down, buddy. Come on. Come on now. Drop, drop, go. Be pizza food. I don't know. Please, someone, something. And that's when he hears a noise at the top of the stairs. And he looks up at the top of the stairs. And the Minecraft kid has a creeper helmet on and a blue Minecraft diamond sword. It's a foam sword, by the way. It's not like an actual sword. I hope you guys know that. But he has the creeper, he has the creeper helmet on. He has the Minecraft sword. And he says, you will now pay for disrespecting the honor of Minecraft. And he like has his sword and he starts to walk towards him. He's like, you have one second to reconsider your words. And, you know, at this point, Alex is like, what? what bro, what? Because he's like, what? Why? Like, bro, what is this kid saying, bro? What is this kid saying? And at this point, the Minecraft kid's like, show. You have chosen death. And he just runs at him with the Minecraft sword and starts whapping him with it like, pop, 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 pop. Okay, so in all fairness, this is a foam Minecraft sword. It's not like this kid was slashing him with an actual sword and just chopping him up into pieces or anything. However, bro was kind of hitting him and it was slapping. And so it was like slap. I don't know. Kind of hurt a little bit. He's like, so at this point, Alex is like, bro, stop, stop, stop. Like, like uh, I'm sorry, like whatever. At this point, the door opens up and out in the little and the little cousin or the Minecraft kid's mom must have come back early. She's like, hey, guys, I'm home. And she looks around. She just sees the Minecraft kid going like, you said Minecraft was fake. You will suffer. He goes pop, 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 just like hitting with the Minecraft sword. And Alex, who also doesn't see that the mom is home, is like, dude, stop, stop, stop. And the mom walks over there and is like, Minecraft kid, first name, middle name, last name says his like full name or whatever you are disrespecting your babysitter who came here very last minute just because he said your video games are real picks and the, the mom picks the minecraft kid up by the scruff of his neck right and drags him upstairs and it's like you are gonna be grounded for the rest of the night give me that takes the minecraft sword off of him bro the whole time he still has that creeper helmet on anyways the mom gets there early and is like or like after putting him up there walks down I was like hey 
I got back early. I just it didn't take as long as I thought it would. Thank you so much for spending with that. You know, give, spending the time that you had with him. I'm sorry he was so upset about about that nonsense. You know, my son's very impressionable. Reaches into her wallet, hands him a twenty. Thank you for your time. And Alex is like, hey, a twenty. Hey, all right. If you need me to come back, like, I don't know. If you're gonna be paying me twenties, then like. I might be able to show up again. I click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a good day. Uh, today, we got some crazy emo kid stories that I know for a fact you will enjoy. So sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's call the first subscriber who submitted this story, Hank. By the way, all these episodes are on Spotify, and they normally come out a couple hours early on Spotify, so make sure to check that out. First link in the description. Anyways, back to the story. So we're going to call the first subscriber who submitted the story, Hank. And anyways, this all happened when Hank was shopping at the mall. So Hank used to always go to the mall to shop with his friends. You know, it was just a fun place to hang out. They didn't really have a lot of other places that they could go uh, in the town that they lived in, so the mall was probably their best bet. And uh, sure enough, one of these days, one of Hank's friends wanted to shop at this place called Hot Topic. If you don't know, Hot Topic's a place where they have a lot of uh, t-shirts and other kind of apparel that is very, uh, I don't know, like fast fashion-y brand centric. Like it's very much like you, you'll have a lot of different uh, brands or kind of like you'll find a lot of band t-shirts, a lot of kind of like... Okay, so a lot of different stuffs at Hot Topic, but one kind of theme of clothing that you'll see at Hot Topic is... Uh, emo style clothing if that makes sense so like really black clothing edgy clothing stuff like that and just so you know like i have nothing against it if you dress like that i think it's a cool enough style i think you're fine if you even if you identify as like oh i'm i'm emo in the way i dress or act or whatever i don't really care live your life however as long as you don't act as long as you don't act like the kids in these videos especially this one you're chill with me. But anyways, Hank just was like, okay, man, like, you want to go to Hot Topic, that's fine. Hank hadn't really been in that much, so he didn't really know what to expect. So Hank was walking into, the, you know, the Hot Topic, and he was looking around, and there's a whole host of people, and Hank's friend was like, all right, man, like, I'm going to go, like, I'm going to go to the back of the room. I know what I want. I'm going to go in their skateboard section. You can kind of just wander around here. I'll be out when I'm done. So Hank was totally fine with this, and Hank kind of, like, was wandering around, and he walked over to one of the t-shirt aisles, or one of the t-shirt shirt rack aisles and that's when he accidentally bumped into this kid and this kid turns around and just to paint the picture this kid has super long black hair he's got like black mascara on black lipstick he's got black painted nails he's got a spiky collar he's got like a black band t-shirt he's got like long black jeans and then those like big black stomper boots i don't know if you know what i know like if you know what i mean but like those big kind of like those big rubber black boots that are pretty popular right now and he turns around and he's like, dude, what the heck, bro? And Hank's just like, all right, my fault. Like, I didn't mean to bump into you like that. I was just looking around and wasn't paying attention. And the emo kid's like, dude, you're like, like, shut up, bro. Hank's kind of just looking at him like, uh, like, I, I don't really know what you mean. Like, I didn't do anything. Like, are, are you good? And the emo kid's like, bro, like, I don't need to, I don't need to hear that sass from you, bro. Like, I really just don't need to hear that. And uh, Hank says once again, like, dude, I, I don't know what you're saying. Like, I'm sorry. I'll just go the other way. And Hank kind of turns around to de-escalate because he doesn't feel like, you know, escalating anything. It's just not a good idea to get into fights like that. And that's when the emo kid's like, like, yeah, you would run. You're dressed like one of those jocks anyways. Which, like, Hank kind of turned around because he didn't know what that even means. First of all, I mean, isn't jock a positive thing? Like, I get that there's a bit of a neg like, negative connotation of, like, oh, you're a dumb jock or something. But I would have thought that, like, jock would have meant, like, oh, you're an athlete, which isn't, is, isn't that a good thing? Like, I'm, I'm kind of confused right now. Is that not a good thing, you know? And Hank, uh, you know, kind of turns back and he's like, dude, like, wh why? Like, why are you, like, making a problem with me? I don't have a problem with you. I, like, you're kind of the one that's making this into something, because Hank really did believe, like, I'm not, I'm not the one doing anything, it's, like, 100% this guy who's making it something, you know, and, uh, you know, the kid's just like, well, you know, like, you're just looking like a dumb jock, uh -huh. isn't that right, guys, and he turns around, and there's two other emo kids, and they look very similar to the main emo kid, but they kind of just, you know, they're dressed slightly different, but really, I mean, it's funny how, like, non... I, I saw this on South Park, but it's funny how, like, non-conformists all dress the same. <laughs> I'm just, like... 
Well, I mean, you are conforming to something, but anyways, right? So the other two kids, the other emo kids are kind of there along too, laughing. And, you know, you know, Hank is starting to, like, get upset by this because he doesn't really care about, like, these random kids, what they think, except, you know, he's got three kids standing there pointing at him, laughing in his face when Hank didn't deserve it. Like, Hank was, you know, Hank was thinking, like, look, if I deserve this, if I was being, like, an absolute, like, you know, if I was being a jerk to them or I, or for some reason I actually did something, sure, maybe I deserve this. But Hank's just thinking to himself, like, dude, I don't deserve this. I was literally just chilling here. I actually bumped into this kid. Like, I'm sorry about that. Like, my fault. Once again, my fault. But that's when Hank turned the tables on the emo kid. And the thing is, right, the emo kid was wearing a band t-shirt. And the thing about band t-shirts is, you know, it, you don't, okay, you don't necessarily need to know everything about some place that you rep. Like if you wear a t-shirt that's from Starbucks and someone's like, okay, well then name all the flavors of like ca cappuccino you can get. It doesn't have to be like that. But the thing is, a lot of people wear band t-shirts because the band t-shirts look sick and uh, they don't know any of the songs from the band, which, you know, I guess is fine. But like at the end of the day, a lot of people will kind of pretend to know it and not actually know it. So, you know, Hank was like, well, screw it, bro. He's like, all right, buddy. And he looks at the main emo kid and the main emo kid looks at him back. And he's like, all right, buddy, name me three songs from that band. And he points to the emo kid's t-shirt. And I don't know, maybe it was like Nirvana or something. Like one of those kind of like t-shirts or whatever, which, uh, and the emo kid looks at him and he has this kind of look of shock. This look of, oh my God, like you caught me. Kind of the look of like man got caught in a trap right here type of look. And the emo kid's kind of just like, um, um. How about you name me three songs from this band, bro? And, he turn, and the emo kid turns to look back at his emo kid friends as kind of like, oh, what's their reaction to that sick burn? And they kind of just look at him blankly. I think the emo kid was kind of expecting he would turn around, he'd look back to his friends, and he'd be like, oh, yeah, wasn't, wasn't that a crazy burn? I totally got them. But his friends look back at him kind of just like, ah, dude, like, I don't know how to break it to you, but... You didn't get him. So the emo kid turns back around. He's like, uh, I don't need to tell, like, I don't need to do anything you say, bro. I'm not going to conform to your standards. And then the two emo kids were like, yeah, that's right on, bro. You're so right. And they like dap him up. And Hank at this point is he's just so done. He's just like, bro, because he realizes like Hank's like, you know what? I'm not going to fight with these kids. These kids are obviously a lost cause. This is not worth my time. So Hank gets up, he turns around, and he kind of says, like, whatever, man, like, go live your life. Hank turns around, starts to walk away, and that's when he feels a tug on his pants. And he turns around, and he sees the emo kid failing to pull down his pants. So basically, the emo kid couldn't, like, you know, wanted to, like, he couldn't let Hank just leave by himself. Like, he couldn't let him just do that. He, so when Hank turned around and started to walk away, the emo kid, like, went to jump and try and pull down his pants to, like, pants him, to embarrass him, to, like, impress his emo kid friends and be like, oh, my God, I totally owned him, dude. So at this point, like, Hank is like, dude, stop pulling down my pants, bro. And the emo kid's like, oh, sorry, I just slipped. And he's like, uh, uh. And his emo kid friends laugh along as well. At this point, Hank's getting really annoying. He's like, sorry, bro, like, I'm not into you like that. And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, you're trying to pull down my pants. So you're not, you're telling me you're not trying to get a peek? And, and the emo kid's like, dude, it's not like that. I was trying to pants you. And, and, and Hank's like, yeah, you wanted to pants me so you could see my, my bare bottom. Did you really want to see my bare bottom that bad? And at this point, the, em the other two emo kids start laughing a little bit. And the emo, the main emo kid turns around and he's like, stop laughing, it's not funny. He turns back around, he's like, dude, you don't know what you just did. And the emo kid walks up to the, uh, walks up to Hank with his chest puffed out. He's like, bro, you literally don't know what you just did. You don't know who you're messing with. Okay, I don't know if he started to tear up or anything, but the, at the exact same time, the mall cop that happened to be like going around the mall to make sure that nothing's what like happening looks into the hot topic and sees basically this kid walk up to this other kid with his chest puffed out. So the mall cop outside kind of slows down walking and looks inside. And sure enough, right, you know, Hank is like, hey, look, I'm not looking for any trouble. And the emo kid's like, yeah, that's what I thought. You're freaking scared, bro. Don't tell me otherwise. You're freaking scared. And at this point, Hank's like, dude, I'm not scared. It's not like that. 
I just like, I just don't want any trouble. Like, you're not worth my time. And he's like, I am worth your time. I'm worth all of your time plus some because I'm worth more than you, dude. You don't know who you're messing with. At this point, right, the emo kids was really kind of just showing his true colors and being like, I mean, kid's insecure. That's fair enough. He's trying to act all tough in front of his friends. So once again, Hank's like, you know, he turns around and he's like, all right, man. He's like, dude, I'm just not doing this. Once again, have a good life. Hank turns around, and as Hank's turning around, the emo kid is like, in his head, he's like, I can't let this slide. So the emo kid literally raises up his hand and swings on Hank. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment emo down below. I just want to see how many people made it, to the, made it to the end of this video, as I do appreciate you guys. Best way to support the channel, as always, is just watch a bunch of the videos. The more watch time you give to the channel, the more we get promoted in the algorithm, and I really, really do appreciate it. Let me know in the comment section what you do while watching my videos. I genuinely want to know. Just so you know, all these episodes are on Spotify. It's in the description, the first link. Please rate us five stars when you have a chance. If you want to submit these stories, and please do, because, you know, that's how I make these videos, go to my Instagram or Twitter. They're both in the, in the description, but they're also at Connor Pucks. I got a Discord server, link in the description, code Connor Pugs for 10% off gamer subs. Let's get back to the story. So Hank, remember, he turns around and Hank's like, dude, I'm not going to deal with you like that. It's not worth my time. So Hank turns around and the emo kid, who's like, I can't, I can't let Hank like one up me. Like, I can't let this random kid like, you know, kind of like alpha me in front of my emo kid friends or whatever. So Hank turns around. So as Hank turns around, the emo kid swings on him, takes his fist, whew, the thing is, though, the emo kid's not like a, a trained, uh, I don't know, fighter or boxer or something. So obviously the emo kid doesn't make contact with Hank. Instead of making contact with Hank, the emo kid nearly misses Hank and his like right hook goes right through a rack of clothes. The emo kid was also, emo kid was really putting his full force into this too. Because once the emo kid misses and whiffs on Hank, the emo kid flies forward into the rack of clothes. So he basically like, pushes himself into a rack of clothes, fails to swing on him. The mall cop, however, did see the emo kid try and swing on Hank, so he walks in there. Hank turns around, and he sees the emo kid on the floor in a pile of clothes, and he's just so confused on what happened. And then, the, you know, uh, Hank turns around the other way to see a mall cop standing in front of him. So Hank's really confused at this moment. He's like, okay, one second ago, the e I turned away from the emo kid. And a second later, the emo kid is sitting, like, face first in a pile of clothes. And a mall cop is standing above me. Like, this literally makes no sense. And sure enough, you know, the mall cop's like, hey, you know, hold up, everyone. I got to talk to you guys. And the two emo kids, like, from the back, like, they, they get scared and they literally run off. They disappear into the rest of the story. He's like, hey, you get, get back here. But also the mall cop didn't really care that much because the, the two people that he really wanted to talk to were both Hank and the emo kid who swung on him. So the emo kid gets up. He's, like, kind of panting a little bit. He's like, <sighs> <sighs> and the mall cop's like, hey, like, hey, I saw you swing on this kid. I know you didn't make contact. But you did try and swing on this kid is 100%. Like, I, I, what's going on here? The emo kid's like, dude, I was just defending myself. And at this point, you know, Hank's like, that's not the case. Like, this, like this kid and I were kind of talking back and forth. He tried to pull down my pants. I made fun of him for doing that. I turned around. He tried to swing on me. At this point, right, you know, the mall cop kind of witnessed the last the last 60% of this altercation. So he knows for a fact that he saw the emo kid try and pull down the pants and then have an argument. So the emo kid says, well, after I pulled down his pants, uh, this kid tried to swing on me and I just defended myself. And the thing is, right, that was a mistake for the emo kid because the mall cop had been watching the whole thing. So the mall cop knew for a fact that that wasn't the case of what happened. So he went, so the mall cop goes on to say like, dude, I know for a fact that's not what happened. I saw you guys kind of like bickering in the store and I wanted to make sure that we had no like nonsense going on. Obviously some nonsense did go on and I, you know, I watched the whole thing. I saw you pull down, try and pull down this kid's pants. He did not swing on you. I don't know what he said to you that offended you or anything, but it's very clearly that, you know, you're the aggressor here and like, you know, I, I can't have that. So he's like, Hey, I'm going to need you to come with me. And the emo kid's like, all right, like, all right, buddy, go ahead with him. And the emo kid is like looking at Hank and kind of giving him this look of like, come on, bud, like, go, go ahead. He's asking for you. When in truth, 
that, you know, the mall cop is not asking for Hank. The mall cop is asking for the emo kid. So the mall cop's like, sorry, man, you must be mistaken. I'm not asking for this guy over here pointing to Hank. He's like, I'm asking for you. And he points at the emo kid. And the emo kid is so absolutely stunned by this revelation. He's like, at this point, the emo kid is practically speechless. The emo kid is standing there, is just like, you, you must have some kind of, you must have some kind of mistake or something. Like, you can't be talking about me. That's insane. Like, there, there's no way. Like, uh, what, what, what do you mean? Hanks is looking at the emo kid with this bit of a smirk. And the, hall, mall, the mall cop is kind of like, come on, bud. Like, we don't want to have any trouble here. Make this nice and easy for all of us. And just come along with me. And, you know, at this point, the emo kid is looking at Hank and kind of just giving him this look of like, this isn't over, buddy. This isn't over. And Hank is kind of just like, wow, this like a lot just went down the last five minutes, you know, because this was like no longer than like 10 minutes of an altercation. And as soon as the mall cop basically drags the emo kid away, his friend comes rushing up to him and he's like, dude, dude, like I just checked out the thing I was getting. And in his hand, he had this like skateboard thing or whatever. He's like, dude, I just saw like a mall cop over here. I saw some kid getting dragged out of the store. Did you happen to see what happened? And Hank just looks at his friend and is like, did I happen to see what happened? He's like, buddy, I lived what happened. Okay, so the, we're going to call the subscriber for the next story, Bobby. I got a little uh, King the Hill theme going on with these names because I got Bobby and Hank. If you know, you know, and you're cool. Anyway, so Bobby was like hanging out at home one day and one of his friends hits him up. And, you know, Bobby, you know, doesn't see this friend this often because they happen to be going to two different schools, even though they live relatively in the same area. They're both in high school and they're both seniors in high school. So Bobby's friend, who we're going to call Ben, actually happens to have a car at this point. And, you know, Bobby's friend Ben hits up Bobby one day and Bobby's just chilling at home and he gets a text from Ben saying, hey, do you want to like hang out today? And Bobby is feeling kind of lazy. So he's like, ah, maybe like, well, what do you want to do? His friend's like, dude, I want to go to the skate park. And Bobby in his head, he's like, I don't know if I want to go like this is I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I really don't know. And Bobby should have stayed home that day based on what was about to go down. But he didn't because he wanted to see his friend Ben. And he was like, wait, what else am I going to do today? Watch Netflix. I know by I know for a fact by the end of the day, if I'm just sitting here watching Netflix, I'm not going to be a happy camper. So sure enough, Bobby texts him back. He's like, yeah, man, like I don't got a ride. But if you can pick me up 100 percent. So sure enough, this friend, you know, I don't know, an hour later, pulls up to Bobby's house and says, hey, man, get in. And, you know, Bobby shows up to the, you know, the window. He's like, hey, what's up, Ben? I haven't seen you in forever. I don't got, just so you know, I don't have a skateboard, just so you're aware. And Ben's like, dude, I got two in the back. Don't worry about that. I got you. So sure enough, you know, Ben hops into the car with Bobby. And, you know, they, they drive, or Bobby hops into the car with Ben. They drive over to the skate park, which is like 15 minutes away from where Bobby lives. And they get out and, you know, Bobby used to skate a little bit back in the day with his friend. It's been a while, so he's not going to do any tricks or anything like that. But he's just getting along and he's just getting on the board. He's kind of riding around a bit, just getting a little bit of exercise. And mostly he's out there just to hang out with Ben because he hasn't seen Ben in a second and they used to be really tight. So sure enough, you know, Bobby and Ben are just chilling at the skate park. They're having a good time. They're kind of just living their life. And that's when a group, a group, a very specific looking group, uh, of, of these emo kids. They pop out of nowhere, basically. And they just appear at the end of the skate park. So this skate park is pretty big. It's not like a massive one. It's not like a, where you'd have a professional skater event or something. But it's a pretty big skate park. Like, the city definitely puts them, like, a good amount of bread into making this. So sure enough, you know, they, they're looking over and they see this group of kids. And this group of kids has, like, a ringleader that's, like, standing in front of the other two. And he's kind of dressed like the other, they're all dressed like kind of like the other emo kids in the last story time. So I'm not going to go ahead and describe them. They're dressed a little bit differently, but it's all kind of the same, if you know what I mean. So the sure enough, you know, the kids are just standing at the end of the park. And it's really awkward because like Bobby goes over to Ben. He's like, dude, like, see those kids? And Ben's like, yeah, I've just been staring at them. And Ben's like, dude, they've just been looking at us for like the last thing checks his watch. He's like, Dude, they've just been looking at us for, like, the last, the last like, two minutes, bro. That's really freaking weird. And, you know, Bobby's like, yeah, man, like, this is kind of weird. I don't totally know, like, what's the deal with all this. Like, do you know what's up with them? And Ben's like, dude, I don't go to this skate park. Like, this is your skate park. And Bobby's like, yeah, I don't really skate anymore, so I don't know. Maybe this is, like, a place they normally go to. Either way, this is kind of weird. Let's just stay on this side and... 
hopefully they'll stay on their side. And if they come over, you know, hopefully they're cool. Spoiler, they're not cool. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the farthest thing from cool. But anyways, you know, Bobby and, you know, Bobby and Ben try and ignore these kids. As these kids literally, they, the thing is, these kids, they're not, they don't even have skates with, they don't even have like a skateboard with them. And you don't need to have a skateboard to hang out at a skate park. You know, a park is a park and it's a cool place to just hang out with some friends. That's 100% true. However, I will say it is a little weird to like show up in a group of kids or a group of like a bunch of people stand there and watch other people without saying anything to each other, without doing anything like that. I will say that itself is pretty weird. So sure enough, you know, Bobby and Ben are just kind of standing there like, dude, this is really freaking weird. What's going on? And that's when they look over and sure enough, they see the emo kids start to walk closer to them. Like the emo kids were just standing there for a good solid, I would say 10 minutes. And that's when the emo kids start to walk over to Bobby and Ben. And at this point, you know, Ben turns over. He's like, dude, what is up with your neighborhood, bro? Like, why do you always get the weirdos? And Bobby's like, dude, it's not my fault. I don't go here this often. I don't know. And that's when the group of emo kids shows up. And there's like very clearly like, this is going to sound weird, but like an alpha one. Like, okay. I'm not trying to use, like, weird, like, alpha male terms or whatever. Oh, Connor, which one's the sigma male? Shut up if you say that in the, that in the comment section. Ironically, dude, actually shut up. But anyways, sure enough, you know, the, the kind of, like, the alpha of the pack, whatever that even means in emo pack words, is like, hey, you two, I need a word with you. And Bobby and Ben kind of just look at each other just like, oh, my God, like, what's going on here? It's just kind of strange. You know, Bobby, Ben kind of like whispers over to Bobby like, dude, we are never going back to your park ever again. And Bobby kind of just gives him this look of like, dude, I can't control this. So sure enough, the emo kid, let's just call him the alpha emo kid. <laughs> no, I can't say that for much longer. The, uh, the, the, the main emo kid, King the Pack or whatever, walks up to them. He's like, bro, do you not, under do you not know? And Bobby and uh, Ben kind of look at each other and, you know, Bobby speaks up and says, no, no, like knows what, like no what. The emo kid laughs. He's like, oh, you don't know then. This is our turf, dude. And uh, Bobby and Ben kind of look at each other, and Ben speaks up like, turf? Emo kid's like, yeah, man, you don't understand. This is our turf. And Bobby just means like, w what does that even mean? And they're like, you, dude, you don't want to mess with us. And one of them like legitimately, legitimately pulls out like a wand. Not, not like a knife or something, not like actually trying to be intimidating. Like this isn't like, oh, they think they're like actually in a gang or something. This is their turf. They pull out a wand, like a freaking Harry Potter magic wand. And you know, the main emo kid's like, bro, my boy over here knows magic. You don't want to mess with him, dude. And uh, so Bobby and Ben kind of look at these kids and you know, Ben speaks up. Ben's a little bit more brash. Ben's a little bit more, you know, I don't know, uh, Conf confident is maybe the wrong word, but I'm going to use that word. Then uh, Bob confrontational. That's right. He's a uh, Ben's a bit more confrontational than Bobby is. So Bobby would have been fine literally just going somewhere else. It's not like there's not a lot of other places. I mean, there's not a lot of other places they could go, but it's not like Bobby's a big skater in the first place. He just wanted to hang out with Ben. And Ben literally goes up. He's like, dude, what are you going to do with that little magic wand? You're going to wave it around, put a spell on me. It's this freaking Harry Potter dude. We don't care. You guys don't have turf. That's ridiculous. Like, look, we're not taking up the whole park. This park's massive. You guys chill over there. We'll do our thing over here. We like, there won't be any trouble. And the emo kid's like, dude, there's going to be trouble if you guys don't leave or at least pay respects. And, you know, Ben at this point's like, the frick you mean pay respects? Like, what is that? Like, what do you even mean by that? And at this point, Bobby's starting to realize that Ben is kind of finding this amusing more than concerning. Bobby's more concerned by this just because they outnumber them like four to two. And these emo kids definitely like aren't hitting the gym every day. But at the same time, like four to two, it doesn't matter like how big you are. Like you're not taking them one on one. So like Bobby didn't want anything like that. Even if it's that emo kid smoke, he didn't want it in the first place. So sure enough, Bobby kind of looks at Ben and kind of gives him a look of like, hey, like, come on now. And, and Ben is like, no, I'm going with this. And Ben's like, all right, man, you know what? Put a spell on us, bro. Like, if you honestly, like, you know what? We're going to take the punishment. Put a spell on us. And the main emo kid looks at them and is like, dude, you don't want our smoke like that. You don't want us to, like, drop a spell on you like that, bro. You don't know our power. You don't totally get it. And Bobby is just looking at them. And Bobby's, like, kind of, like, completely freaked out at this point. Not that they're going to actually put a spell on him and, you know, 
I don't know, curse him or something. Bobby is just so freaked out by everything going on. That he just doesn't want anything to do with it. So Bobby is like, uh, I don't know, man. How about we just like, we stay here and you go over there. And the emo kid's like, I'm not talking to you, little boy. Which like, Bobby was like so taken aback by this. that the, <laughs> And Ben was like, you don't call my friend that. Come on, if you're such a big guy, little boy. And the, at this point, Ben says little boy back to them. If you're not such a big guy, little boy, put a spell on us. And he points to the guy in the back. And there's like a little emo kid in the back with like a little magic wand or something. The main emo kid says, you know what? Gentlemen, gentlemen, I, I don't want you guys to be seriously hurt. So I'm going to give you one more chance to, f to leave the premises or my friend will put a spell on you and want you will be cursed so badly that you will not make it out of this park alive. We have magical powers that you simply don't understand. And Ben is looking at them and, <laughs> and Bobby is looking at them and the emo kids are looking back. At this point, it's a classic, it's, a, well, it's one of those classic Texas standoffs, like who's going to shoot first, but instead of shooting, it's uh, either staying there or shooting your magic spells through your wand or whatever. And, you know, Bob, Ben was like, all right, no, we're staying here. Put a spell on us. Do it. And the emo kid is like, fine, you've sealed your fate. And all of them walk away. At this point, you know, Bobby and Ben look at each other. And Bobby's like, Dude, those kids are weird. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Ben is like, really is your neighborhood spawning out the most NPCs in the world, dude? Like, this is crazy. And, the, you know, Bobby and Ben were probably going to go back and forth a little bit about how weird these kids were. But they were, unfortunately, interrupted by chanting. So they look over and they see the emo kids, like, holding hands, chanting, like, kind of like going in a circle like kind of like moving in a circle, holding hands, chanting like demonic tongues. At this point, Bobby's like, bro, I'm kind of freaked out. And Ben's like, dude, this is a comedy routine. Please, like, chill out. And at this point, they do like the chanting gets louder and louder. And it's kind of weird. Like, it's really strange. It's like they definitely have been rehearsing this. And Bobby is going to, Bobby admits to me that for a split second, he was thinking like, dude, what, these kids actually have magic powers. Spoiler, they don't. <laughs> They're just weird, right? And by the end of the chant, you know, one of the kids comes over. The main one grabs the wand, starts swinging it around, and starts walking over to them. He's like, like, one last chance, boys. I'm giving you one last chance to literally survive. This is, I'm giving you one more chance unless you want to, like, if you want to leave here and see your parents again. And Bobby was just in his head like, dude, this kid's legitly weird. And Ben says, you know, bring it on, dude. I want to see the worst you have. And Bobby was like, you know, he admits, you know, he was a little bit concerned just because, I don't know, just like the confidence these emo kids had was kind of startling. And the main emo kid's like, fine. Takes up his wand. He starts like saying a bunch of like random gibberish and waving his wand in a circular motion, pointing it at Bobby, right? Or at Ben, not Bobby. And Ben, you know, kind of looks at Bobby and gives him a wink. And Bobby knows that, but you know, Ben's about to be up to some mischief. And the kid is like, ha da da da, ha da da da, ha boo! Or does like what is very clearly like the final motion. And Ben literally like opens his eyes super wide, clutches his heart, and drops to the ground and doesn't move. Bobby is like a little bit freaked out, but he also remembers that Ben just like gave him a big wink. And you hear all the emo kids, like some of them are in the back, like, oh my God, oh my God, it actually worked. The spell actually worked. And the main emo kid has this look on his face, like the most scared look you've ever seen. The main emo kid was terrified because for like a couple, like for a good 30 seconds, the main emo kid actually thought that he just killed this kid from his like magic spell or whatever. So sure enough, you know, the emo kid like drops his wand, rushes up to Ben and is like, no, no. The spell, it was too powerful. I should have held back. And Bobby's just looking at him. And the emo kids, the other ones, are standing like talking to each other. And they're like frantically talking to each other. They are really concerned about this. They're like, dude, do we call the cops? Do we bury the body? Like, what do we do? Like, what if our parents find out? All this kind of nonsense, right? And that's when you hear giggling. It started as giggling. But then it just evolved into laughter. And that's when Ben flips over and is this, you can see that he's just been laughing. He couldn't hold it in any longer. And he gets up. He's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You fell for it. This is the funniest thing ever. He's like, guys, you're not wizards. You're just weird. 
go to look go to that side of the park we're going to be here and there's nothing you can do about it and that's when i think the emo kids kind of realized that you know they weren't going to scare them out of there and they definitely were not going to fight them out of there either so sure enough the emo kids are they don't even say anything these kids have, or they're kind of, I guess they're kind of done with trying to scare like Bobby and Ben out of there. So they pick up their stuff, they get up and they leave. And Bobby and Ben, you know, they, they go back to doing their whatever they were doing before. But it really was just never the same after that. Cause like for the rest of the day, Bobby, like Ben would just continuously make emo kid jokes and Bobby would laugh and make them back. So in fact, the rest of the day was better than ever before. And this happened a long time ago. Like, this happened, like, four or five years ago. And Bobby and Ben actually can't, like, reunited a couple years, like, about a year ago. And literally, like, the only, like, the only thing they did during their, like, when they reunited was retold this story and, like, made jokes about it the entire time. And, uh, yeah, this is probably, if you want to continue supporting the channel, please click on the video on video. screen right Thank now. You. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going everyone? Today we have a story of one of the cringiest emo kids of all time, so sit back, relax, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're calling today's subscriber who submitted the story, Brent. So this all happened when Brent was at soccer camp. And so Brent went to the soccer camp every single year, and it just happened that this year he encountered the emo kid at soccer camp. So anyways, this was just another summer of Brent going to soccer camp. His mom dropped him off, and once again, he was pretty excited to go. Unfortunately, some of the friends he made from the year before, they didn't show up this time, so he kind of like was kind of very proactive about finding people, you know, meeting new people, and trying to make some new friends. So anyways, in the very beginning of soccer camp, they had kind of a get-to-know-other-people type deal, and all of a sudden, right, Brent sees this girl, and she was at kind of like the girls' soccer camp, so it was kind of split up like boys' soccer camp and girls' soccer camp. However, it was all under the same umbrella of like the soccer camp program, so they would eat lunch together, do non-soccer activities, but like the morning soccer practices were kind of split up by gender like that. And so anyways, right, right away, Brent saw this girl, Emily, and he immediately kind of fell in love with her. Not actually, but was like, OMG, lol, she's cute. I I'm going to have to, I'm going to try and hit. No, I'm just kidding. He's like, I don't know. He's like, he's going to soccer camp. He's not trying to hit, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. But anyways, right, so she's going to be an important character later on. But for the meantime, we don't need to think about her because someone much more important comes into the picture. So while Brent is thinking about like, oh my God, look at that girl over there. I got to start talking to her. That's crazy. He accidentally bumps into this guy and he look, turns around. This guy is like, I don't know, a little bit bigger than him, a little bit heavier than him, just like kind of a bigger guy. And he's got this like long black hair that's swooshed over. He's like, he's wearing like the standard soccer cleats, but otherwise it's like this black band heavy metal t-shirt. He's got like black painted nails. He's got like a spiky wristband on or whatever. And he turns around. He's like, yo, why did you, why did you bump into me, bro? And Brent's like, oh, my fault. Like, didn't mean to do that. And he's like, you think that I'm, you don't think that I'm an alpha? Is that what you think? Brent's like, what? He's like, I'm an alpha male, just in case you weren't aware, which I, I know that you subconsciously were, because, you know, all betas instantly know when there's an alpha present, and uh, Andrew's, or Brent's, sorry, Andrew was the guy from, like, seven stories ago. Brent was like, uh, what? He's like, bro, do you not know what beta males and alpha males are? Well, basically, beta males are like you and lame, and alpha males are strong, powerful, and dominant in the pack. And with that, like, the emo kid does a big, like, swipe of his big, long black hair. So, like, his bangs would no longer cover his eyes. It immediately fell back in front of his face. He's like, yeah, just so you know, kid, get out of my way. And the emo kid, like, shuffles away. And this was Brent's first interaction with the emo kid. So he's like, uh, okay. <laughs> that, that's cool, man. Like, okay. See you around, buddy. Bye-bye. So anyways, let's uh, flip, fast forward a little bit. After soccer practice in the morning, Brent was actually one of the better kids there. He was pretty good at soccer. They had lunch, and in the afternoon, they had activities such as like this 
like, I don't know, like, tag, capture the flag, all kind of, like, random camp activities, and today was capture the flag, and Brent happened to be on the same team as Emily, so immediately he goes over there, he's like, hey, how's it going? Like, my name is Brent. Emily's like, hey, like, my name's Emily, nice to meet you, and Brent and Emily immediately hit it off, they're having a good time, they're talking with each other, they're enjoying each other's company, you simply love to see it, and, like, from very far away, Brent catches the, catches the eye of the emo kid who's on the other team and is just staring him down for some reason. Brent doesn't really think much of it, and then, like, you know, he goes back to talking to Emily. So they're playing capture the flag right now, and Brent, you know, runs over to the other side, gets the flag, right, and it starts running back to his side. If you don't know capture the flag, there's, like, this little penny on both sides or, like, a little piece of cloth or something, and while you're on the opponent's side, if they tag you, you're in, you're in jail, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to run over there, grab their flag, and run back to your side without being tagged. However, there was a stipulation that it had to be a tag. This isn't tackling. You can't push someone. You can't, like, punch them or anything. You all, you have to tag them if they're on your side. So, you know, Sam... Oh, Sam. Brent is running over there. Sorry, I have a list of names in front of me and from other stories. Brent is running over there. He grabs the enemy team's flag and is running back to his side. And he's really close when he just like immediately slams into the ground. And that's when he realizes that there's a big guy on top of him. And that's when he realizes that the emo kid tackled him. So the emo kid's like, nice try, buddy. Next time, try not to fight the alpha males. <laughs> and then Camp Counselor comes over and says, hey, hey, we said no tackling. You, you're on the sidelines, points to the emo kid, you know. He's disqualified or whatever as to sit on the sidelines. Ooh, so alpha, man. But anyways, right, so the pennies returned, but also Brent isn't in, like, jail. He goes back to the other side, and the emo kid has to sit out for the rest of Capture the Flag. And Brent continues to talk to Emily, and the entire time, the emo kid is just, like, looking over, and he's, like, all angrily staring at Brent. So Brent is now his official enemy. Brent kind of just assumed that they were enemies because of when he bumped into him and also when he got him disqualified, which, did Brent really get him disqualified or was it because he's an idiot and jumped on him? That's why he got disqualified? Who knows, man? But there was another reason why the emo kid hated Brent. There was another reason that Brent did not realize at the moment, but was very... Very, very potent, and it's going to be very, very important for later on in the story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a hint. It starts with an E and ends with a Mli. Did you guys get it? It starts with an E and ends with a Mli. A Emily? I'm just going to tell you, yeah, it is Emily, the girl, so Emo kid likes her. Anyways, so Brent and Emily talk for the rest of that capture the flying game. The entire time, the Emo kid is staring Brent down. Brent just simply assumes, well, this kid hates me for that reason only, but let me just say that the next week of soccer camp was the craziest week that Brent has ever had. So anyways, right, his mom picks him up, he goes back home, his mom's like, hey, how was the first day? And Brent says, oh, I met this really weird kid who tackled me, and she's like, oh my god, are you okay? He's like, yeah, actually, I barely any scrapes on me even, but he seems to not like me, so I'll keep you updated on that. So Brent is dropped off the next day, and he walks over there, and that's when the emo kid, you know, is just staring him down. And, you know, Brent is kind of walking over because there's a little bit of like a 5, 10, 15 minute period where the kids are just standing around talking with each other, waiting for them all to be dropped off. And then the kind of the soccer camp officials or camp counselors would then split them up into groups, do soccer drills, play games, whatever, standard kind of affair. And he's just kind of waiting around. And that's when the emo kid comes up to him and says, so you're challenging my authority as the F man. And uh, Brent is kind of just like, what? He's like, <clears throat> I'll say it again, <clears throat> just in case your little beta ears couldn't hear me. So you're challenging my authority that I, that I am the alpha male of the pack. Uh, if we were wolves, which we kind of are, and it, Brent was like, what? If we were wolves, as we kind of are, as I said, I would be the alpha male, alpha wolf. And you would be the beta wolf, and I would be banging your wife while you watch little cuck beta wolf. Whoop. And Brent is looking at this kid, and this kid is like, like, no offense, but this kid is like the opposite of what a stereotypical alpha male would look like, right? One of those red pit alpha males, it just looks the complete opposite of that. But anyways, Brent's not going to get into like a, you know, a, 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 a he's not going to like, he's not going to rebuttal this kid. Because like, what is there to rebuttal? Everything, man? Like, th this kid has no argument. But anyways, Brent's like, 
okay. And the emo kid's like, well, you say okay, but remember yesterday when you got me kicked out of the game, which you obviously tipped off the ref? And Brent's like, bro, you tackled me. It's very clearly stated in the rule books that you're not allowed to tackle anyone. How is this on me? He's like, dude, it was so clearly on you because the ref understood that I was the alpha male and I was simply asserting my dominance, bro. And, you know, uh, Brent's just like, dude, the, the, the frick are you talking about, dude? Like, I, I, I paid him off with what? The $5 allowance I get a week? With what? My, my used smelly, stinky socks? What, what do I have? And he's like, I don't know, man. May, I, I don't know. Maybe you took his daughter on a date because his daughter's so ugly she'd never get a date. Oh. And Brent's like, was, was that a diss? Like, th- does he even have a daughter? He's like 20, bro. What? And the emo kid's like, anyways, I just wanted to let you know that I'm the F man. You're the beta man. I will do your wife when you have one. And scene. And the emo kid walks away. And Brent at this point is like, <laughs> what? Why? 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 Why is this my life? Anyway, so skip forward to the, the soccer practice. They're put into groups, and the emo kid was in group B earlier, so they basically split them up into group A and group B. So the group A is the better players, and group B is the crap, pl- I'm just kidding, the players who are newer to soccer. And the emo kid apparently was on the, like, was on the cusp of uh, group A, it was, on, it was at the very top of group B, and because his performance was good enough, he was actually moved up to group A. So now... Brent, instead of having a morning to himself to focus on soccer, now had to deal with the emo kid being, you know, thrown into the mix here. So anyways, they're doing some drills with a soccer ball, and they're kind of like kicking them around cones. You have to kind of keep control of the ball while you're running. And the emo kid, like they started, they said, okay, line up into three groups. And the emo kid immediately ran behind Brent. And Brent kind of looks behind him. He's like, what? And the emo kid said, nothing, Brent. Just letting you know that I'm the alpha male here. And Brent's like, okay, fine. Let's just do the drill. So the, the ref blows the whistle. Brent starts kicking the ball and moving with it. And the emo kid immediately runs up behind him and trips him. He's like, oh, sorry. And the ref's like, hey. And the emo kid's like, it was an accident, I swear. And the ref's like, all right, be careful. And Brent is starting to get really angry because, like, you know, if you, if you get an injury in soccer, like, especially if you get, like, a foot injury, he could be out for the entire week. I mean, this is like one of his favorite camps that he has every single summer. He loves going to it. It's one of his favorite things to do. And this emo kid, for the second time in the last 24 hours, has, you know, ca- like has gotten really close to causing him a pretty big injury. Like, I mean, he could have jumped. Like, he jumped on him yesterday. He ran behind him, knocking him over. What if he twisted an ankle? What if he, like, I don't know, fractured something in his leg. Like, it's not that hard, especially when you got a big old kid jumping on top of you every five minutes. It's difficult. It's, it's not that difficult, man. So anyways, Brent, for the next activity, waits to get into line before the emo kid does because he doesn't want to be in the same line as the emo kid. But it turns out that, like, everyone else lines up and it's literally just Brent and the emo kid waiting for each other to move because the Brent wants to go where the emo kid doesn't go and the emo kid wants to go where Brent goes. And the refs are, or the, not the refs, but the soccer coaches are like, come on, come on, kind of like, guys, get into line. And Brent's like, okay. And he sprints to the end of the line and then the emo kid sprints to the back of that line. And the coach is like, emo kid, says his actual name. Can you go to another line? Like, that line's too long. The emo kid's like, okay, moves over one line, and when the coach turns his head, the emo kid literally runs back into the line with Brent again. So when the coach turns around, he's like, wait, e- emo kid, I-, I said, could you go to that line? And he's like, fine. Emo kid eventually goes to that line, actually does that. So for the rest of the soccer practice, the emo kid tried to, like, bump into Brent, tried to make his life difficult, basically was just being a big butt the entire time. But um, thankfully, right, you know, that nothing really happened. He didn't bump into Brent successfully again. In fact, the emo kid, most of the time when he tried to bump into Brent, Brent would do some, like, very slick soccer move, kind of, like, break his ankles, not literally, but you know what I mean. And the emo kid would, like, fall flat on his face because he kind of, like, tried to run into Brent and then Brent sidestepped him and completely swerved out of his way. Anyways, though, things start to get a little bit more interesting because 
Throughout the next day, Bren and Emily are talking it up. It's very, it's very like, it's kind of like the known thing for the camp that like those two were kind of like the unofficial soccer camp couple. I don't know if your camps had stuff like that, but this was true for the soccer camp. And word was that, like, the two of them, they were going to kiss soon. Oh, my God, guys, isn't that, like, 12th base or something? <laughs> so sure enough, right, one, one of these days, so, like, a day later, Emily and Brent are just sitting with each other at lunch. They're kind of on, like, a quote-unquote date or whatever. And that's when a girl comes over and sits next to them. And Emily's like, oh, this is my friend Robin. And Robin's like, hey, guys, like, uh, I just want to let you know, Emily, that the kid over there, and points to the emo kid, is planning to ask you out soon. And Emily's like, dude, I don't know that kid. I've never spoken to him in my life. And Brent's like, oh, my God, I know exactly who that kid is. Emily's like, what? And Brent basically tells her the story that I told you guys for the last 13 minutes. And she's like, oh, my God, he's the worst. And Brent's like, well, that would explain why he really hates me, too. Because, like, not just that I embarrassed him, but I've been hanging out with you the entire time. And, you know, he probably knows that we've been talking a lot. And Emily laughs a little bit. And this is when Robin says, dude, like, I'm serious. This kid is going to come over and ask you out within like the next 24 hours. He's going to do it publicly. It's going to be really embarrassing. I everyone's told him not to do it, but he's in his own world. You got to put you got to let you got to let him down nicely though. And you know, Brett was like, "No, no, be mer no mercy. No mercy. Make him suffer." Emily's like, Brent, I'm not going to make him suffer. I don't know this kid. Brent's like, make him suffer. Emily's like, shh, shh, shh. okay, I'm going to be nice. When he comes over, I'm going to be firm. I'm going to be direct, but I'm going to be nice about it. I'm going to be cordial. And life is going to go back to what it was before. So sure enough, right, Brent now realizes that the emo kid has a massive crush on Emily. And Brent also starts to think about it. When Emily says no to him, and when she starts really, you know, hanging out with me more, and when word gets around that we kiss, because we totally are, this is in Brent's head, right? He's going to actually, like, ramp up the craziness even more than it already is. I think I'm screwed, boys. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. I'm going to heart as many comments as I can that say that. That is the secret word of the day. And also, if you want to support the channel and help boost me back into the algorithm, uh, all you got to do is at some point, maybe after this video, maybe later, sit down and watch a bunch of my videos in a row, maybe while you're playing video games or drawing or cleaning your room or maybe to help you go to sleep. I take that as a compliment now. I understand it. Uh, leave in the comment section down below how you're helping boost the channel. I will heart it. I will say thank you. And I'll even shout some people out like the person on screen right now. Thank you to this person on screen and all of you guys for all the support recently. It's really helped boost the channel. We're growing again. You'll love to see it. Let's get back to the story. So anyways, flash forward to that night, or not that night, but that afternoon. Remember when this is the, like, the mixed gender, just fun, more camp activities? They're playing dodgeball. And sure enough, you know, the emo kid and Brent actually happen to be on the same team this time. So, like, emo kid and Brent, they're picking up the dodgeballs, they're throwing them, you know, they're trying to avoid being hit by the dodgeballs. And the emo kid walks over and is like, sup, bro? And Brent's like, what? Emo kid's like... I just want to let you know that, like, I know that you and Emily, or you have been trying to flirt with Emily, and it's been failing horribly for my sources, at least. That's what my sources said. And I just want to let you know that, you know, I, I let you have your fun. I let you play like the little beta little lamb you are. <laughs> but I'm actually going to come in and, as the alpha male, assert my dominance and claim what is mine. Emily shall be my girlfriend by the end of tomorrow. Mark my words. And I will watch as little tears roll down your face because you're so sad that I took your girl. Oh, little Brent, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Brent's like, dude, she's not gonna lie. I've talked to her. She's gonna say no. Like, I, like, don't do it. I hate you, but I know for a fact that you're gonna get rejected in front of everyone. The emo kid's like, nice try, little boy. I know for a fact that my testosterone is 10 trillion and yours is zero. So based on that alone, plus a billion other factors, such as my manliness, my alpha maleness, my swag, overall levels, and a billion more things. Just, she will obviously say yes to me. And even if you two are fake dating, she'll break up with you immediately to say yes to me. I just know some things that you don't know, Brent. 
get over it. So the emo kid walks away. And Brian's like, well, you know, my conscience is clear because I tried to warn the kid not to do it. I tried to warn the kid, right? I- I'm not a bad guy. I told him not to do it. I told him. I said, I even gave him the benefit of the doubt. I said, I don't like you, but I want to help you here. He didn't listen to me. It's not my fault. Whatever happens tomorrow. Next day rolls around at soccer practice. The emo kid for the entire morning is like, Brent, Brent, better spend the last moments with Emily as you can because she's about to be my girlfriend. Oh, and Brent's like, dude, shut, shut up, dude. He's like, oh my God, am I getting to you, man? Am I, am I getting to you, man? Oh man, it was so easy to break your thin, weak beta skin. Oh my God, my words are hurting you so much. I'm gonna lick up your little salty tears. Mm, they're so tasty and so good. And Brent's like, shut up, bro. You're gonna get embarrassed. I can't wait for the moment. She better go hard. Anyways, flash forward to lunch. The moment. So anyways, Brent is sitting with Emily and Emily's like, dude, the emo kid, I can't see him anywhere. And Brent's like, dude, he's going to ask you out. It's happening. Get over it. It's going to happen any second. She's like, he, he's going to do in the next day, which means probably now, probably now in front of everyone. And, you know, Brent's like, that's what he said he would do. And Brent was like, oh, my God, don't turn around because Brent was looking in the emo kid was walking over. And what was he walking over with? He was walking over with a boom box. <laughs> you already know where this is going. And Brent's like, you know what? Brace yourself. Um, try and have an out-of-body experience right now so you don't have to deal with what's about to happen. Um, this is about to be bad, Emily. I'm so sorry. And Emily's like, oh my God, oh my God. And that's when you start to hear music. It's the emo kid's personal band. So it's like this heavy metal rock band. So just imagine some like heavy metal rock going in the background. And the lyrics are, Emily, yeah, yeah, yeah. Emily, why, why, why do you hang with losers like Brent? Emily, please love me. Yeah. And it's just kind of like more stuff like that in the background. And the emo kid is like rocking out by himself with an air guitar while this is all going on. It is the worst moment of Brent's life because the second hand embarrassment is so strong he's basically getting first hand embarrassment from the whole thing everyone has stopped eating and turned around including the camp counselors they're just watching this kid bounce around with an air guitar with his like super long black bangs flying around all around the place as this boombox plays one of the sh- the crappiest songs they've ever heard, the wor- terribly mixed, the worst lyrics, basically saying that Brent sucks and that she should be in love with him. And he's bouncing around. And then after five whole excruciating minutes, and everyone at this point is laughing and trying to hold themselves together, after five whole long excruciating minutes of the worst music ever and some like really bad air guitar and bouncing around, the song stops and the emo kid says, Emily, it is clear who you shall choose. What is your verdict? And Emily's like, I'm sorry, I don't know you. I'm not going out with you. Emo kid's like, that's hilarious. What's your actual verdict? Emily's like, dude, I don't know you. He's like, dude, that's hilarious. What's your actual verdict? And Brent's like, all right, man, that's enough. Let's, 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 let's concede while we're behind. The emo kid looks at Brent and says, this isn't over, man. And he walks away with his boom box. And Brent's like, why did he say that to me? I, I, didn't, didn't, I didn't dump him. And Emily's like, dude, that was worse than I could have ever imagined. And right, so Robin, the friend who warned them, came over again and said, look, I should have warned you about that. I didn't, I didn't think it was real. I didn't even think that that was actually going to happen. I was told earlier this morning and I laughed. I'm so sorry. I should take, take anything that you hear about this kid seriously from this point on because, oh my God. And Emily's like, wait. Oh, no, we still have an activity tonight, like, for the, like, this afternoon. And Brent's like, oh, my God, he said this isn't over. And sure enough, it was far from over. So they get to the activity that afternoon. So it was probably the worst possible activity that it could have been because it was small groups of charades. They kind of ran out. They, they had something else planned, but since it started to rain, they had to go inside. So they're like, all right, we're going to break you off into small groups of three. And we're going to have you play charades with each other. And at this point, like, they're like, okay, what are the odds? Brent's like, what are the odds 
that I'm put with. And the person says, Brent Emlene emo kid. And Brent's like, you gotta be joking, man. You gotta, you gotta be joking. Apparently, right? Robin tells him this like later on, like once the camp is over, apparently they email, cause she was talking with one of the camp counselors about everything that went down. The camp counselor said that like, once like it started to rain, the emo kid went up to them and asked what they were doing. Camp counselor said, oh, we're doing groups, small groups of trades. And the emo kid requested that his two best friends and him were put together in a group. So it wasn't just random. It was the emo kid, but Brent didn't know that at the time. So Brent looks at Emily and Emily looks at Brent and they're both, both, but they're both basically just like, oh boy. And they, then they both look at the emo kid who has a massive smile on his face. So all three of them go away to a corner. And the emo kid's like, Emily, I might have came on too strong. And she's like, well, that's an understatement. But he's like, I will show you the truth. Brent, I challenge you to an alpha battle. Brent's just like, what's an alpha battle? Ha, you're such a beta for not knowing what, what an alpha battle is, beta. He's like, an alpha battle will be proof that I am alpha and you are a weak beta. And then Emily will choose me. And Emily's like, I'm not. And he's like, wait, your, your heart will tell you otherwise after the alpha battle. Emily's like, okay, I'm still not going to. She's like, God, stop, silence, woman. And Brent was like, whoa, chill out, dude. He's like, you silence too? We're having an alpha battle right now. So, right, this is kind of looks like they're doing really weird charades from afar, but the emo kid is like, all right, let's form our best wolf poses. Brent's like, what? He said, form your best wolf poses now. And emo kid, uh, Brent's like, all right, all right. Ooh, emo kid's like, that is the worst wolf pose I've ever seen. You were definitely not part wolf like I am. And the emo kid does this really weird pose. He's like, oh, my God. I, I'm wolfing so hard right now. This is the most emo thing. I mean, the most <laughs> the most alpha thing I've ever done. Oh, my God. At this point, Emily's like, guys, you are both embarrassing yourselves. Emo kid is like, no, you will see that I'm the most alpha. I swear. Emo kid's like, all right, let's do it. Wrestle me. And, you know, Brent's like, what? Emo kid jumps on top of him, just tackles him to the ground. Because he's like 20 pounds heavier, right? And a little bit taller. And Brent was completely taken off guard. He's like, bro, stop. What are you doing? And the emo kid's like, I'm out alphaing you. And that's when one of the cam counselor comes over and says, all right, guys, break it up, break it up. Tears the two of them apart. He's like, all right. So we're only doing this for 20 more minutes, but it looks like... Uh, Looks like you two can't keep, you know, can't keep off of each other. So I'm going to be joining your group. Imagine how awkward this is. It is Emily and Brent, the emo kid, and a random camp counselor. So they do normal charades, right? And the entire time, the emo kid is, like, sneaking in punches to Brent's arm. He's like, ow. And when the camp counselor looks up, the emo kid puts his arms behind his back. And the emo kid is like, this isn't over, man. And then the emo kid walks over to Emily. He's like, tss, tss, Emily, tss. Emily's like, what? Do you think I'm more alpha? Shut up, kid. Emo kid's like, no. Okay, well, okay, I'll just be direct. Do you want to go out with me? No. And the camp counselor was like, guys, silence while I'm doing charades. And Emily's like, dude, I don't want to go out with you. How many times do I need to tell you this? Emo kid's like, but I'm definitely more alpha. She's like, that's not a real thing. So the next day rolls around. It's Thursday. And that afternoon, there's no real activity. It's just known as, like, the uh, soccer dance or whatever. And during the soccer dance, there's one coveted slow song where anyone who has feelings for each other might ask for, like, a slow song or something. And sure enough, let's just jump to the dance because the emo kid is, like, being a jerk to Brent all day. But that's not anything new. And sure enough, it is the dance. And they're putting on normal songs. And Emily and Robin and Brent are all together like, dude. And Robin's like, dude, the emo kid is definitely going to try and get that slow song with you. Like, Brent, you got to swoop in right away. Because at this point, Brent and Emily were like unofficially a thing. They're only at camp for a week. So they're not going to make like a, a long-term relationship. Let's have kids, baby. Okay, okay, you know what I mean. But sure enough, uh, you know, the slow song comes on. 
And Brent's like, oh my God. And Emily's like, quickly. And you can see the emo kids sprinting from the other side of the room. So Emily and Brent quickly like get together in the slow song, kind of like whatever. And Emily's standing there and she feels Brent being ripped off of him. And the emo kid grabs Brent, rips him off Emily and tackles him on the ground. And this is where the camp counselors are like, oh, okay, foul play, foul play. They go in, they grab the emo kid and they like run it. Like they, they take him off. They're like, all right, buddy, this is like like your third strike and you are out so they call up the parents of the emo kid they say your kid your son can't come tomorrow he's like fighting this one kid again and again and he won't stop and so sure enough the emo kid was picked up taken away and brent and emily finished off with a slow song together the next day rolls around it is friday it is only a half day where basically the parents come and watch a little like soccer presentation that all the kids have done and by the end of it, right, you know, most people are packing up. Brent and Emily are gone. And you remember the friend Robin from the beginning? One of the camp counselors and Robin were, like, friends or whatever or, like, friendly. And the camp counselor counselor's like, do you happen to know about that, like, emo-looking kid? Like, do you happen to know what was up with him? And Robin's like, do I have a click story Click on the video on screen right now. You. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Leave a like on this video and I'll actually give you nothing at all. Now, but what's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new story. And just imagine you're chilling with your girlfriend. Life is awesome. You stare into her eyes lovingly, and then all of a sudden, this emo kid walks in and says that you must fight him to the death to decide who gets your girlfriend. And at that moment, you seriously just sit there and question your life choices. That is the story I'll be telling today. So sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, and let's just jump right into this story. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the story James. So anyways, there's, an e there's a kid in James's class who we're gonna call the emo kid. He kept to himself, he wore crazy makeup and the dark clothing and whatever, and uh, honestly doesn't really matter what you wear, but he was also extremely melodramatic. Like he would come in, he'd be like, Society doesn't understand me. No one gets me. I'll never fit in. He, he was kind of like one of those kids that kind of just like would say this stuff and then would be like, why do I not have friends? I'm just a melodramatic freak all the time, which uh, I mean, I was pretty weird <laughs> in middle school. So like I can't really speak. But uh, then again, hey, man. Anyways, so there's also a girl in uh, I don't know. I'll just call her like uh, we'll just call her Kate, right? It's name of my friend back home. Uh, so anyways, James and the emo kid, unfortunately, decided, had to cross, cross paths because they both had a thing for this girl. And this Friday, right, so this story all starts th like this weekend, or not this weekend, we'll say starts on Monday. And this Friday, remember, not actually this Friday, I mean this Friday in the story, was going to be the school dance and the whole thing was like whoever got the slow dance with this girl was basically going to like if you so the thing at James's school is if you slow danced with a girl you were basically dating her at this point you guys were practically in love at that point so it was a pretty big deal who was going to get the slow dance and it was the emo kid versus james and this became very public knowledge like the emo kid was telling everyone that he was going to 100 percent get the slow dance and people kind of knew james because james was more popular he wasn't like i don't know some like really annoying popular person he was just like a cool guy that everyone liked i mean at least according to james who submitted this story so who really knows but we'll go with it right so everyone kind of knew that both the emo kid and uh, James were both fighting for this girl, Kate. And Kate made it pretty clear that, you know, she was not going to say yes to the emo kid. Like, sorry, unlucky. Life just works out like that. But she was considering saying yes to James. She was kind of just keeping... Uh, the truth was that she was going to say yes to James if he asked. However, she just wanted to keep him kind of like on his toes and questioning or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, throughout that whole week, uh, the emo kid and James, they didn't really, like, they weren't, like, in a fight with each other, but they, it was kind of like, they were kind of like rivals in a sense, even though they never had any direct confrontation. And let's just skip ahead to that Friday. It was the day of the school dance. It was emo kid versus James. So anyways, at this point, you know, the emo kid is like, you know, he's kind of like, he's standing in the corner at the dance, right? Look, I was pretty awkward in, in high school and middle school when it came to those big dances, but to be fair, everyone else was as well. But uh, the emo kid was kind of taking it to a whole different level. He literally was like slouched in the corner of the room, his like long black hair kind of like down, almost like, you know, that scene from the ring 
with that, like, the girl who comes out of the TV. He was kind of looking like that chick for a second. So he was definitely not helping himself out in this situation. And at this point, James and his boys were kind of standing, like, together, whatever they were dancing to. I don't know. I don't freaking know what they play at high school dances. Maybe some uh, Whip Nene by Silento. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's a middle school dance, bro. I don't know how this works. But anyways, they're kind of waiting for the slow song to come on. Maybe some, I don't know, some like song by Adele or something like that. Like the when like, dude, I always try and like say lines from songs during these stories and I just blank every single time. Um, but anyways, yeah, so they're all kind of waiting around there, and it was, uh, eventually, the slow dance song came on. And remember, you might be thinking, oh man, who cares, it's just like a slow song. No, 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 what you have to understand is the slow song meant everything to these kids. Like, the slow song, basically, if you had a slow song with some girl, because remember, they were in middle school, this, this was like 7th, 8th grade, so the, probably the farthest you ever went with a girl was like slow dancing, or maybe holding her hand, if you were like crazy, because you know... If you hold a if you, if you hold a girl's hand for too long, there is a chance you get her pregnant. So, <laughs> definitely not misinformation from the Connor Pugs channel. <laughs> but anyways, slow dance was a really big deal, and all of a sudden the song comes on. And the thing was right, uh, the, the the emo kid was too busy, kind of like sulking about society in the corner of the room to react quick enough. So James was like, "All right, bro, like that guy's playing himself. I'm gonna go in." So James very quickly goes in. And boom, he gets there, goes up. He's like, hey, like, hey, like, can I have this dance? And she very happily says yes. Because she said, like, oh, I don't know if I'll say yes. She knew. She was bluffing the whole time. And James kind of felt pretty confident about it. And even though she said, I don't know, he was pretty confident because her friends were like, yeah, dude, she's totally bluffing. Like, I hate to expose my friend like that, but she definitely has a thing for you. You're, you're chilling. You're in the green. So anyways, James goes in, he feels pretty good about the whole thing, but let me just say that the emo kid eventually looks up, and then he sees this, and the emo kid is not having it. Uh, so <laughs> he does something pretty insane, so uh, strap in and definitely prepare for the cringe. If you have your uh, cringe seatbelt un unbuckled, I'm actually going to fine you for your own safety. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and uh, buckle that cringe seatbelt, because... There was, like, a DJ station, and there was, like, a guy who was, like, DJing, quote-unquote, and there was, like, a microphone, so, like, you, so, like, the DJ could say, like, hey, like, 20 minutes till the dance is done, or get ready for this hype song, or whatever, and other than that, he just, he was really just a Spotify playlist, <laughs> he just, like, he just edited the Spotify playlist, right, however... The DJ let the Spotify playlist run on autoplay or whatever, and he went to the bathroom. So the emo kid ran up to the, uh, he ran up to, like, the spot or whatever. He grabs the microphone. He stops the music. First of all, he goes up to the Spotify, clicks pause on the music, and screams into the microphone, wait! And everybody turns around. Everybody turns around, and they look at this kid. And they're all kind of, like, looking at this emo kid who's standing at the front of the room with, like, the, the, the microphone. He picks it up. He's like, Kate, no! So at this point, everyone's kind of looking at this kid like, oh, my God. Because they all knew that, like, he wanted to have the dance with Kate, but, like, James obviously got it. So they were like, ah, that's tough, man. Like, life sometimes doesn't work out the way you want it to. Like, that's just unfortunate how that goes. However, you know, he goes up there and he's like, he goes in the microphone, like he says, wait, and everyone turns around. The music is off. He's like, Kate, may I have this dance? And everyone's so confused because first of all, he turned off the slow song in the middle of the song. And also she was already dancing with someone. And instead of just going up to her, he makes a massive scene in front of everyone, grabbing the microphone and screaming into it, saying, like, will you have this dance? And the thing is, right, it's caused enough commotion that the guy, like, the DJ that was hired ran back. Because I think he was supposed to be there the whole time, but he needed to, like, rip a piss or something, so he needed to go. And he runs back over. He's like, give that back to me. He, like, snatches it out of the emo kid's hand. He's like, sorry for the, inter sorry for the interruption, guys. Turns the music back on, like, starts, like not cursing out this kid, he's a middle schooler, but being like, dude, what do you think you're doing? You can't just like, come up here and take this stuff. Like, if like if you do this again, I'm going to tell your teachers and you'll be in big trouble. Or, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how much trouble a, uh, a, a hired DJ can get you in, but, you know, the emo kid returns to his cor corner and literally just sits down, just slumps into the corner of the room, which James felt kind of bad. 
he felt a little bit bad because like James has definitely been in that position. I say that very kind of liberally because James has not actually been in a position where he grabs the microphone at the school dance, stops the music and asks the girl out unsuccessfully. He hasn't specifically been there, but he's definitely been in a situation where it just hasn't gone his way. So he feels bad, man. You know, feels bad, man. You hate to see it. But uh, yeah, anyways, James like continued on with the slow... I mean, he's not going to stop his life because this kid has an unlucky moment. Like, that's tough. So uh, yeah, you know, while, I, I will say there was kind of an awkward moment because while like James is like slow dancing with Kate, he kind of like turns around, like they, they kind of like turn around so James is facing the emo kid and he just looks up and the emo kid is staring at him with like the creepiest, most stalkerish, most scariest stare he's ever seen. Because the emo kid is slumped over like the girl from the ring, right? And is just like staring right at him. He's like long black hair, like covering most of his face besides his eyes. And he's like slumped over too. Like kind of like crouching over like an old guy with a cane or something, but without a cane. And James is like, hey, do you mind if we turn like 45 degrees this way or 90 degrees this way. Ah, thank you. That's much better. So he doesn't have to see him anymore. Or actually, let's do a whole 180. I mean, he didn't ask for a 180 because he didn't want like Kate to be making eye contact with him either. But yeah, so that was a bit of a tough situation. However, you might be thinking, well, I mean, at this point, reasonably, the emo kid must have realized that this just wasn't his day. And uh, he must have just like given up, which he's already... In I mean, he's already embarrassed himself. Like, he probably gave up after this point. And uh, while that would be pretty fair for you to believe, that was unfortunately not the... That was just not what happened. Because the emo kid would continue... Um, let me just say that the emo kid thought that if he, if he had a sword fight with James, that he would be able to win the honor of his lady. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. Leave, I will try and heart as many of those comments I possibly can. And also, if you want to support the channel, the best possible thing you can do is just watch this video throughout the entirety, the entirety of this video. And then afterwards, if you could watch some of my old videos, that helps more than you can ever imagine. And please go in the comment section and tell me how many of my old videos you've watched today or this week. I'll heart it and say thank you because it helps me out more than you can ever imagine. Anyways, let's go back to the story because the emo kid is not done. In fact, he is far from being done. So what happened after the school dance, like over the weekend, um, James actually met up with Kate. They went to like go get dinner together. And that's when they officially started dating, w whatever that means in eighth grade, which means, oh, my God, they're going to sit together at lunch. Oh, my God, dude, that's crazy, right? Uh, but anyway, so James officially starts dating this girl. Word gets around really quickly. And eventually the emo kid, I I'm pretty sure at this point the emo kid would have known, but... By his next actions, it's not super clear. So that Monday is the first kind of like lunch day that uh, uh, Kate and, uh, what, what's his name, James, are going to be having their first real at-school lunch date, which is a pretty big deal for the eighth graders there. Obviously, it's not that big of a deal in general, but hey, man, let them have their fun. And so, uh, yeah, he sits down, like he finds Kate, they sit down, and they're at a table by themselves. And like people are looking over and talking and be like, ooh, someone's dating, <laughs> whatever, right? And uh, however, James, you know, Kate is facing away from the door, but James is facing the door. And James sees the door open up and he sees the emo kid walk in. And James is like, ah, this is tough. Because James feels bad. He legitimately feels bad because, I mean, if the roles were reversed, he would feel bad like seeing the girl that he really liked a week ago sitting with a guy who was low-key his like enemy rival on a date. Like that would be tough to see. And James started to feel a little bit worried when the emo kid starts to approach him, right? Starts to approach him. And uh, yeah, so the emo kid walks up to their table and at this point, Kate also realizes that someone's walking up, so she turns around. And the emo kid walks up and doesn't look at James. He's not paying any attention to James. He's actually acting as if James doesn't even exist at this point. The emo kid turns to the girl, uh, Kate, I forgot her name for a second, says, Kate, I've been wanting to ask this for a while, but since we've become so close in the last couple weeks, which they have never spoken before, but that is beyond the point. At this point, that is beyond the point. He's like, I was wondering if you would like to go on a date with me, if you would like to start dating. And uh, James is like, oh, no, he doesn't know. How does he not know? Because James is like, everybody knows. 
everybody told everybody, but I guess everybody didn't tell the emo kid. Of course they didn't. And Kate at this point is like, oh, well, I'm very flattered. And the emo kid's like, well, if you're flattered, then you should say yes, correct? And at this point, she's like, oh, well, you see, it's actually not great timing because I'm actually currently in a relationship. And the emo kid's like, what? How? With who? And James is like, oh my God, this is, this is so awkward. He doesn't know. So James has kind of assumed that the emo kid didn't think anything of the fact that James got like the dance with her, which in all reality, he was, the emo kid was kind of the one who had the most common sense in that situation because just because someone dances with a girl once doesn't mean anything, right? But at this height, at this middle school, if you got the slow dance, you were basically in, you were locked in at this point is what I'm trying to say. So Kate has to go on to awkwardly explain to the emo kid that, well, um, the guy that she's sitting at right now on the lunch date with happens to be the guy that she's dating. And the emo kid turns to James, looks at him, looks him down and up. Like, there's, like, the elevator look when he looks at, like, the top of his head, looks all the way down and looks all the way up, turns back to Kate and is like, really, dude? You decided to date this guy when you could have dated me? He's like, bruh! And he just, like, he just kind of, like, storms out of there. And uh, James looks at Kate and he's like, Dude, how did that kid not know that we're dating at this point? Like, I swear to God, all your friends told everybody. Like, and Kate's like, dude, my friends didn't tell everyone. And James is like, if you ask anyone at the school, besides the emo kid, apparently, they will know. And Kate's like, yeah, okay, my, my friends do talk a lot. And they're like, well, that was pretty awkward. Hopefully nothing else happens again. You might be thinking at this point, Connor, the emo kid must stop. There is no way he continues on. There's not a chance... That he continues, right? Well, 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 I got some news for you guys. He does continue, and it's bad. Because uh, you might be thinking that, oh, well, the emo kid stormed off and he was done. No. About 20 minutes later, when there's only like 10 minutes left to lunch, James sees the doors open up again, and he's like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Because the emo kid walks through. But this time, he is like stomping towards James super angrily. He runs up to the table practically, looks at James, looks him in the eye, and says, it's not over between us. It is far from over between us. And he's like taking his little finger and like pointing at James. And James is like, okay, nice. Like, I, 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 like, we do not care. Like, I, 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 I don't know what else to say at this point. Like, okay, cool, nice. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want me to say? And the emo kid after that is like, you better watch yourself. It's about to get bad. He, like, storms out of there. And, you know, at this point, James is like, okay, well, I guess uh, that answers my question. So the next day at lunch is where things get really, really, really crazy. So he's sitting there with, J uh, with Kate on his second date. James is enjoying himself. He's having a good time with Kate. They're enjoying each other's presence. They're, they're doing well. I mean, they're, they're kind of clicking, so things might continue on, right? And that's when the emo kid walks in. And he's carrying, like, two sticks, like, two pretty good-sized sticks that he probably found in the backyard of the school. So in the backyard of the school, there's, like, a mini forest. Nothing too crazy, but there's, like, a pretty big forest back there. And the emo kid must have gone back there and, like, found two decent-sized sticks. He walks into the cafeteria with one stick in one hand and one stick in the other. And James is just looking at him. And he's like, he kind of says like to Kate, he's like, oh, okay, we got trouble. Kate turns around, looks at it, and it's just like, turns back around and is like, what? And James is like, yeah, I have no idea what's happening, but I guess we're about to see. So the emo kid walks up to the table, like kind of like waddles his way up. And he's like, you. And he like hands the stick to James. And James is like, uh, like, I need a little explanation. What do you want me to do with this? Like, it's not super clear. The emo kid's like, you and I will have a sword battle, and whoever wins the sword battle will have the uh, will 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 win the honor of your lady, and will. At, at this point, like Kate's like, what? And James's like, dude, what are you saying? He's like, fight me, fight me to the death. The winner gets your girl. And James is like, no. And the emo kid's like, oh, so you're scared of me then? You know that you're gonna lose, and that's why you don't want to do it. And James is like, well, I'm not convinced I'm going to lose. I mean, I'm not an expert at random stick fighting or whatever. But at the same time, 
why would I want to even engage? Like, why would I even want to do it? And the emo kid's like, well, uh, I, I mean, I, I mean, for the sake of your honor, bro, like, do you really want to be known as the guy who chickened out because he's a chicken? And James is like, well, I mean, I, I don't really care, but I also don't want to be known as the guy who went on, st- who during the, like, the dance last Friday grabbed the DJ's microphone and, like, stopped the music to, like, ask out a girl who was very clearly in the middle of dancing with someone else and then come into school the next day super angry with a bunch of sticks and try and, like, fight some guy to get the girl that already obviously said no to him twice. At this point, the emo kid's like, so you're, what you're saying is that you're too scared to fight me and because you know you'll lose. James is like, dude, we're going in circles right now. I'm not fighting you. I'm not having a sword fight to the death. Like, okay, I'm just not doing that. At this point, the emo kid's like, fine. Well, you're about to see me in my final form where I am the most powerful. And James is like, uh, okay. Like, word. And then the emo kid reaches up to James and rips out like a strand of his hair. And James is like, dude, like, that hurt. Like, why would you do that? And the emo kid's like, I need that for my wizardly spells. And he, like, laughs really awkwardly and, like, shuffles out of there. And James turns to Kate. He's like, dude, (sighs) like, what life choice did I make to get myself to this position? Like, what what did I do wrong? Like, what choices did I make that got me here? And Kate's like, I don't know. Like, this is kind of tough. He's like, yes, why me? Like, why? Why? Like, he just just came up to me with a bunch of sticks and says, I want to fight you, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, he just, like, pulls a piece of hair. Like, what? Huh? Bro? I, 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 I just don't know. I just don't know what to do at this point. And Kate's like, yeah, I I don't know. But, like, I think eventually he'll just get bored of whatever he's doing and give up. So, anyways, next day, it is uh, lunch. Lunch once again. And James comes in, and he finds Kate. And he's almost like they sit down. And he's almost like, he's really stiff. He's, like, not talking that much. And Kate's like, are you good? Like, is everything okay? And James is like, dude, it's not you. It's just the emo. I just don't know what that kid's going to do today. Like, I'm not trying to lose any more hair. Like, that That really hurt last night. Like, I was starting to bleed from my scalp where he pulled me. Like, that was ridiculous. And, you know, Kate's like, yeah, that kid's pretty weird. Like, sorry you have to go through with that. And speak of the devil, dude. Because at that point, the emo kid walks in. And at this point, he has a backpack on. And he has... A, he has a smaller stick and he has, he has a stick in his hand, a smaller one and a, like a, like a spirit Halloween wizard hat on. (laughs) And and James is like, you gotta be kidding me, bro. Like he was, you gotta be kidding me. And at this point, Kate's like, what? She turns around and she's like, oh my God. And the email kid walks up and she's, and he's like, (laughs) Ha ha ha, like, this is where you made your mistake, James. This is where you made your last mistake. And he walks out, and he sits next, and he, like, stands up next to them. He reaches into his backpack or whatever. He takes out a piece of chalk. He takes out, the like, a, a, a plastic bag that has a hair in it, presumably, um, what's it, uh, James's hair. And he also has, like, a candle set and a lighter. And he sits down on their, t- he, like, sits down next to them, and so they had concrete floors in the, uh, in the, in the lunchroom. So next to them, he draws like a pentagram, puts a bunch of like candles around, uh, like the pentagram, takes James's hair, puts it in the middle, lights all the candles. At this point, like this is taking like two minutes to do. Kate and James are just sitting there looking at him completely aghast. Like what is like, just like, what is this kid? What is this kid on? Like, whatever he's on, dude, like, maybe get me some of that. Oh, my God. No, but they were just like, w- 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 I mean, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to say? So eventually the emo kid has his whole, uh, I don't know, his magic setup is all done or whatever you want to call it. And he lights, starts lighting all the candles. He's like, James, this is your last chance. Give me your girlfriend and I won't put a spell on you. And James is like, dude, what do you mean give me my girlfriend? Like, 
it's a it, it's like a mutual choice to be like girlfriend and boyfriend like <laughs> you're, you're acting as if this is like the 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 1600s or something and like when and like the the wife is the property of the husband bro like what are you talking about and you know he's like one more chance bro i'm about to put a crazy spell on you if you don't give me your girlfriend and k this is when kate speaks up and is like dude like even if he said that he was going to give me to you, I'm not going to be, like, I'm not going to be your boyfriend. Like, I'm not going to be your girlfriend, dude. And the emo kid's like, well, I'm going to put a spell on you too, dude, if you don't become my... <laughs> he literally threatens Kate. It is, And he's like, oh, if you don't become my girlfriend, I'm going to put a spell on you as well, which... Okay, um, I might not be the smoothest individual. I might not be, I don't know, the one that has the greatest pickup lines of all time. My Tinder one's pretty funny. I did steal it from my friend, but maybe I'll... I'll, I'll 5,000 likes and I'll reveal it because um, it's, it's pretty funny, but it's also a little embarrassing. But here's one thing I do now. There's a very decent chance that if you threaten to cast a spell on a woman if she doesn't become your girlfriend, she's probably, probably, not 100%, but probably not gonna become your girlfriend i know i might be going out on a crazy limb right now and I, you guys might completely disagree and maybe you found your wife of 10 years who loves you very much from threatening her with magical spells i just don't think that's a great way to do it so eventually the emo kid finishes up and then he lights the hair in the middle and then he takes his magic wand waves it around and just starts saying a bunch of nonsense and at this point, half the, like, the, the entire cafeteria has turned, is just, like, looking. They've almost, like, circled around it like it was a school fight or something. They've circled around it, and they're just like, what the frick, bro? Like, oh, my God. Like, what's going on right now? And eventually, the emo kid, like, points his magic wand at, um, at James and is like, ooga booga, or I, I don't know. He's just saying some nonsense. And, uh, like, literally 15 seconds of pure silence happened. And then... Very clearly, nothing happens. And he's like, I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna count to three. If you don't, you're going to explode because of my spells. And James is like, I think I'm going to take the risk. He's like, three? I'm going to give you one more chance, bro. Like, I'm going to give you one more chance. And James is like, nope. I'm going to take the risk here. Two? And he's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good, man. Like, you can go ahead with this. If I explode, I explode. Like, that's tough. <laughs> one? Last chance, dude. I'm being super generous right now. Just give me your girlfriend and we'll be all good here. And James is like, nah, I'm, I'm chilling, bro. He's like, fine. Kicks it. The, the emo kid literally kicks over his magic, like, whatever set. Because I think he knew it wasn't going to work anyways. Which, thankfully, is concrete floors and nothing, like, flammable. Because, like, the candles fly all over the place or whatever. And he storms out of there. He, like, storms out of there. At this point, <laughs> James sits back down. He's like, you know, maybe we should go on dates at night when we're not in school. And Kate's like, you know, that's not a bad idea. So the next day, Kate and James actually don't sit together at lunch. Um, they sit separately. Um, but uh, yeah, so they, they, just, they decide that if they're going to like do anything, at least for a little bit to do it outside of school, like after school or at lunch or something like that. But the emo kid once again comes up to James and James is like, oh my God. Oh my god, dude, like, what? What now? And the emo kid, like, he literally goes on one knee and, like, kind of, like, presents, he's, like, he's down on one knee, puts his head down and says, like, I concede, I concede the battle, you win. Like, I just, like, I tried everything possible, but you are the better duelist. Like, I honorably concede. And in James's head, he's like, bro, he didn't say this, but he's like, bro, you did not honorably concede. You did the least honorable, con like, <laughs> you did not concede honorably. But at this point, James sees this as a perfect opportunity for the emo kid to just stop. So he's like, all right, man, like, it was a good battle. It was really close, and you'll get them next time. Like, honestly, James is trying to be as chill as possible so that the emo kid doesn't come back and be like, well, actually, I'm going to try more magic or something. And the emo kid stands up, and he, like, kind of, like, nods his head. And James nods his head back, and the emo kid bows and leaves. And yeah, after that point, James and the and uh, Kate actually were able to like do like lunch dates or whatever in school again. Uh, the relationship lasted like six months. It didn't last crazy long, but Kate and James are still cool to this day. 
And uh, yeah, the emo kid never Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today I have probably the craziest emo kid story I have ever received to date. I'm not even kidding. So sit back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's just jump right into it. We're calling today's subscriber Ty. So anyways, Ty was going off to camp, and this was his first time doing an overnight camp, so he was a little bit nervous, and it was kind of like a wilderness-based overnight camp, uh, but they were mostly in cabins. Ty's parents did it before, and they actually met at this camp, so they were really pushing for Ty to go, but the summer before, he just said that he, you know, wasn't ready and was going to do it the next year, and of course, the, the next summer rolls around, and Ty's like, oh my god, I said that? So sure enough, Ty and his parents ship him off to this camp. Ty's a little bit nervous about it, but they say, hey man, it's going to be good for you. Trust me. Like, I know it's scary, but you just got to do it. So anyways, they arrive at the campground and they go, they walk over, Ty and his parents walk over to the person who is signing everyone in. And it's some like, you know, some 25 year old dude with a big old goofy smile on his face. He's like, hey guys, welcome to Camp Awesome. That wasn't actually the name, but we're going to call it Camp Awesome. Uh, hi there, buddy. What's your name? He's like, uh, uh, Ty Gooden. And he's like, ah, Ty, let me see. Ah, there you are, buddy. All right, so you're going to be in group B over there. And he points to this group of kids and, like, one counselor or whatever. And Ty turns around to his parents, and his parents are like, all right, well, we'll see you in two weeks. And Ty's like, Mom, like, I don't know if I can do this. And Ty and his dad, his dad kind of sits down and he's like, yo, you got this, buddy. Like, you don't need to worry about it. Like, trust me. The two weeks are going to fly by, and you're going to have so much fun, you're not going to want to leave. That's a guarantee from me. And Ty's like, all right. So Ty walks over, and he goes over to group B, and there's a big group of kids, and, you know, the counselor's like, hey, guys, my name is Ben. Uh, don't worry, he's not the evil guy, but hi, guys, my name is Ben. Welcome, like, to the camp. These are going to be the guys who are in our group. We're going to be in the same cabin together. We're going to do a lot of activity activities together. You can still meet people in the other groups, but these are going to be the guys you're going to be seeing all the freaking time. So start getting to know each other. Let's go around, do some names. And so they went around and did some names. And Ty was just kind of like observing like, all right, well, that person seems kind of cool and whatever. Like, oh, we have that in common. And then it kind of comes around to this one kid that Ty didn't even realize was there until like a couple, like until he spoke up. And this kid had these, like, long, black, swooshed hair, right? He wore all black. He had these, like, rock band t-shirts, these big, like, black boots. He had this spiky, like, and bracelet necklace type thing. And by the way, if you kind of dress emo, that's totally chill. I don't really care. As long as you don't act like this kid, you're cool in my book. I say this every single time. And this guy was kind of just known as the emo kid. And since I don't, I don't want to give him a name because I will forget it and then it'll be very awkward. But we're just going to call him the emo kid from this point on. And Ty didn't think anything negatively. He was just like, oh, this guy really does put a lot into the way he dresses. And he definitely dresses with a lot of character. Ty legitimately had no ill will or feelings of just like, ew, this guy's dressing different than me Ugh, or anything like that. It was just an observation. And so later on, you know, they have, like, they go to dinner together as a group, and then afterwards they have, like, the welcome to camp ritual, whatever. They all sit around a big campfire, and, like, they're, like, inaugurated in the class of 2015 or whatever. I don't know. This took, this took place a little while ago. But anyways, right, it's finally time for them to go back to their cabins to figure out which bunks they want, etc., like that. So anyways, right, they get back there, and uh, they're just ran, they, the, the, the counselor dude who is their group B counselor, right, who's also sleeping in the cabins with them, is like, well, you know, just to make sure that no one feels left out, we've already assigned bunks to everyone. So he said, all right, Ty, you're in bunk A, and he says, so-and-so, you're in bunk B, so-and-so, you're in bunk D, and then in bunk D, which they're in kind of like quads of four, or they're in kind of like groups of two, but they're bunk beds, so it's four. So in Ty's group of four... The fourth one was the emo kid. So the four of them walk over. They go in their bunks. The camp counselor say, or the camp counselor says, yo, if, if you really want, you can talk to your, your bunkie about being top or bottom. Don't, doesn't really matter. Lol. Doesn't really matter. And so sure enough, Ty and his bunk didn't, but they didn't really care. Ty was on the bottom. He didn't really care. But anyways, flip over to the, you know, the emo kid. And the emo kid is like, you know, with this guy, and we're going to call this guy uh, Benjamin, 
is a throwaway name, but Benjamin was his bunk, and, you know, the Benjamin is like, hey, do you mind if I have the top? And the emo kid is like, no, I must have the top. I must keep watch at night. And everyone just kind of went silent in that, that group of three. They're like, uh, or group of four. They're kind of like, um, and Benjamin's like, all right, man, uh, that, that's fine. Bomb bunk's cool with me. He's like, good. You've made a good choice because I will watch over us at night. I have spoken. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay, a lot of character in this guy. <laughs> funny guy, funny guy. <laughs> Anyways, things seem pretty normal. Pretty normal until, you know, it's time for them to go to bed. So anyways, uh, you know, they, you know, they go and they brush their teeth and then they get into bed and the camp counselor guy comes around and is like, all right, group B, section A, or whatever you want me to call you guys. Let's call you the A squad. Yeah, um, we're going to have a lot of fun in the next two weeks. Uh, just make sure no leaving the camp or no leaving the cabin overnight. Make sure that, you know, you follow any rules that, um, you know, we ask you to be nice and, you know, be nice and like fair to everyone and just, you know, have fun. Anyways, good night, guys. And he walks out of there. And so, you know, the lights are turned off. And they were tying his box in his top bunk and also Benjamin across from him. They were talking for a little bit. And the emo kid didn't really join in. He was just sitting cross-legged, but like kind of like sitting very stiffly. So he was very much not going to bed. And eventually they were like, all right, I'm tired. Good night. And they all kind of like go to sleep at that point. And about 20 minutes later, Ty has not fallen asleep because he's still feeling a little weird. He's in a new environment. He, it's like dark or whatever. He's a little bit scared. He's a young kid, whatever. He hears wrestling, right? And that's when he hears steps, right? And he realizes that the steps are coming from across from him and it's coming from the top bunk across from him, meaning the emo kid, you know, is starting to walk down the bunks. He's like, all right, well, there's nothing too weird with that. And that's when he hears because there's like a door next to like their cabin. So there's like multiple exits from the cabin. He hears the door open and he watches as the emo kid walks out. So Ty at this point is like, what? So he kind of gets up and the person above him is completely asleep. But Benjamin, the kid from the side of him is still awake. And he's like, yo, Benjamin, Benjamin. He's like, yo, what's up? He said, emo kid. Cause I may maybe said his actual name, but we're calling him emo kid. He's like, emo kid, he, he just walked out the door. Benjamin's like, you can't do that. And, you know, Ty's like, dude, but he did. So anyways, they both get up and they both look out the window, but they're trying to do it stealthily so that they're not caught, right? And they see the emo kid literally just standing there, standing there looking into the moon. It is the creepiest, weirdest thing they have ever seen because the kid is just literally freaking standing there, bro. He's just standing there observing the night sky. And they're all like, oh my God, dude, that's freaking weird. What is going on right now? And, uh, you know, sure enough, you know, Ty and Benjamin were like, all right, this kid is a little strange. Uh, make sure he doesn't, like, strangle us to death or something in our sleep. I'm a little freaked out. And that's when the emo kid, out of nowhere, does a 180-degree turn and turns right looking at the window. Ty and Benjamin quickly jump down. They're like, oh, my God. Do you see us? Do you see us? Do you see us? So, like, Ty starts to look up. He, like, peeks a little bit into the window and quickly goes down because he sees the emo kid walking towards the window. And he's like, dude, dude, Benjamin, he's walking towards the window. He's like, crawl back, crawl back to your bunks, crawl back to your bunks. So they both crawl out of sight of the window and they crawl into their bunks. And it's dark enough in the room for them to do this without being super obvious. And they're both in their bunks. And Ty turns around under the like under the uh, the sheets, right? And he peeks out, and the emo kid is literally standing right with his nose up against the window, looking in. And he's like, "Oh my god, this kid's insane!" Uh, anyways, emo kid walks back in quietly, goes up the stairs again, and sits in the bed and supposedly goes to sleep. Ty doesn't fall asleep for like another hour afterwards, but eventually he opens his eyes to the camp counselor being like, "Ty, Ty, come on, come on." Where we're going to be late. And Ty's like, oh my God. And everyone else is like, yeah, you slept in, man. Actually, everyone in this bunk besides emo kids slept in. And that was because everyone was so freaked out that they couldn't go back to sleep. But anyways, first day activities, they go outside. And during the day, they don't totally have to stick with their group. They're actually assigned to random groups. However, a lot of people in the random group will be from their group because they're just trying to make friends within the group. So, and they also go to meals together. So like lunch or dinner or whatever is together. And so anyways, the first activity of the day is not with the emo kid. It is actually like uh, 
kayak slash canoe or whatever, either or, one of those two, and, you know, Ty is a lot of fun, and they go back to dinner, or lunch, sorry, they go to lunch as a group together, and Ty's, you know, talking about what he was doing, and the counselor kind of went around the table and was like, oh, so Ty, what did you do, and Ty explains, oh, so Benjamin, what did you do, Benjamin explains, oh, so emo kid, what did you do, and he was like, you know, I prayed to the overlord, and they're like, oh, ha, ha, I don't remember that being an activity. Emo Kid's like, it's not. It's necessary. And he's like, eh, okay. Anyways, guys, so I'm going to read off the people in your next activity because the way it worked was at meals. So at breakfast, the camp counselor read off what group everyone else was in for activities. And then at lunch, the camp counselor read off what people would be in for the uh, afternoon activities. And so Ty, uh, the camp counselor was like, oh, so Ty... Uh, Benjamin and Emo Kid, you're all going to be in the uh, group seven or whatever. And that happened to be like something with like wood tool making or something kind of cool like that. So anyways, uh, after lunch, they all head in that direction. And Ty and Benjamin are like walking together. However, the Emo Kid, it's not like they were walking away from him, but the Emo Kid intentionally stands like or like walks 10 feet behind them, never breaking the distance. Like they always have 10 feet between them and the emo kid never breaks it. And he kind of walks weird. He walks very stiffly, yet he's kind of like propped forward at a 30 degree angle. His arms straight shoot like straight down and he kind of waddles a little bit like a penguin, but it's very intimidating and very weird. And Benjamin kind of whispers like, Ben, Ben, I, 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 I can feel his eyes in the back of my head. And, or not Ben, but Ty. Ty, I can feel his eyes in the back of my head. Ty's like, dude, Benjamin, I know, I know. So anyways, they get there. And the camp counselor dude is like, hey, guys, welcome to woodworking. It's going to be a lot of fun. You can make whatever tools or whatever you want. All I, all I ask is that when you're using the, this blade that, you know, I'm there and help you guiding it. And also, if you want any, like, I don't know, if you want any... uh inspiration or questions come to me and it's all cool so anyways ty and benjamin sit down they're like oh let's make like wooden knives or something so they're given a pocket knife and they're taught how to whittle away it's like always you got to face it away from you never face it towards you if i see you guys facing it towards you i gotta revoke your knife privileges not true not trying to be that guy but it's part of the jab so anyways right they look over and they see the emo kid and he's like whittling away at the spoon and he's or at this at the stick and they're all like um, so eventually at the end of class, they're, or the end of the activity, they're asked to go around in a circle and say a little bit about what they made and show it off. So Ty's like, all right, well, here's like a butter knife and didn't turn out that well. And everyone laughs a little bit. And the camp counselor's like, dude, it's fire. That's your first time. Don't even worry about it. Eventually comes around to the emo kid and the emo kid is like, whips out this like almost perfectly whittled. Like this is like really professionally well done. And the camp counselor, counselor is like, wow, what is that? He's like, this is a wand for my warlock activities. Nobody better cross me now that I have access to my most powerful weapon of a wand. And everyone was like, what? Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment emo down below. That's the secret word of the day. I'll try and heart as many po comments as I possibly can that say emo. And then also, if you want to support the channel, watch a bunch of these videos in one sitting. I call it binge watching. So if you're sitting down, maybe playing video games or trying to go to sleep or something like that, watch like 10 videos in a row if possible. I know it's a big ask, but if you do so, please leave a comment down below. I'll heart it and even shout you out as on screen right now, shouting out some people who are supporting the channel and telling me about it. So yeah, thanks to these guys and you guys, and let's get right back to it. So fast forward a couple days into the week, and every single day the emo kid's been doing weird things. So right now is a Wednesday. For context, they got there on a Sunday night. So this Wednesday night, Benjamin and uh, Benjamin's kind of becoming like the side character for Ty. Like he's becoming like pretty close friends. And Ty and Benjamin are kind of like talking about the emo kid and being like kind of tracking the weird things he's been doing. But tonight is one of the weirdest things he's done. So once again, Ty and Benjamin have been noticing that the emo kid has been going outside every single time, like 15 minutes after they go to sleep. So Ty and Benjamin, they both get in bed, and when the lights are turned off, they wait about 15 minutes, and sure enough, the emo kid gets out of bed and walks down the steps. And he walks outside, and he walks to kind of this like big forest clearing. So Ty and Benjamin, they both walk over, and they both look up, and they look out of the window. 
and they're looking out, and they see the emo kid, and normally he just stands there blankly, but this time was different. He was getting to work. They saw the stick that he made in the wands, in like the wand craft whatever class, and or the woodsmanship craft, uh, class, and he takes the, the end of it that isn't pointy where you do the spell, and he puts it into the dirt because he's standing in a pretty big dirt clearing, and he starts drawing this circle, this very big circle. And, and Ty looks over at Benjamin and is like, dude, what on earth is going on? Like, what is this kid doing? And Benjamin's like, dude, I have no idea. And they look at it, and he's drawn a complete perfect circle around him. And then he steps out of it. And then he starts making lines within the circle. He goes from the top of it, down, up, down, across, up. He's made a perfect upside-down pentagram. And if you don't know, that's basically like a sign of like ship or the something. So at this point, right, Ty and his friend are freaking out. They're like, oh my god, he's trying to like summon something. And sure enough, the emo kid starts like waving his wand around in these weird directions and starts like spinning around in a circle and making these like weird movements. And <laughs> if TikTok was around, I bet Ty would have been like, bro, is he trying to do a TikTok dance or something? But anyways, Ty and Benjamin are watching as the emo kid, after making the upside down pentagram, just starts waving it around and starts speaking. Like, because they crack the window was cracked open a little bit and they start hearing like like some weird <laughs> okay maybe it wasn't as goofy as that but he was kind of talking these like weird tongues or whatever and that's when they heard the light flick on not in their room because they would have seen that they heard the light flick on in the middle cabin the middle part or the middle part of the cabin that is where the camp counselor lived. He must have heard or must have felt like some kind of disturbance or something because they see the emo kid drop his, like grab his wand and sprint out of there and sprint so quickly, he goes to the back room. And that's when like Ty and Benjamin are like, oh my God, he's sprinting here. So they quickly jump into bed and are, you know when, I don't know if you guys did this, but like when you're, when you were up later than you should and your mom is about to run into like open the room and you just jump into your bed and then you just stay super, super, super still that was them like it doesn't matter if you're sprawled out in a weird position you're staying as still as possible so they jump in they're super still and, and they watch as the door opens and the emo kid runs in and runs up up to like the second bunk and just sits in there and that's when like they see like literally 10 seconds after the emo kid gets into his bed they see the light flicker on and the in the camp counselor who's for cabin b or whatever walks in is like Hey, 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 I saw something out there. Any of you guys go out there? And, like, you know, everyone's pretending to be like, what? Like, they just woke up. The emo kid is really pretending to be like, what? I don't know what's going on, bro. And, obviously, Ty and Benjamin, you know, they're trying to, like, pretend like they weren't up watching the whole thing. And the kid on the very top of, like, uh, uh, Ty just is still completely asleep. So, counselor's like, all right, whatever. He's like, all right, well, remember, it's a punishable offense if you guys leave the cabin during night, like, you will be forced to go back home, and you don't want to miss the fun retreat we're doing this weekend. And they're all like, all right. They're like, yeah, it wasn't us. I don't know what it is. And that's when the camp counselor is like, what? And he sees, he looks outside the window, and that's when he sees it. He's like, stay here. And he goes outside, and they all watch as he walks outside, and he sees, like, the, the upside-down pentagram, like, drawn into the circle or whatever, drawn, drawn into the dirt, and he's just looking at it. And he takes out, like, his iPhone 4, because it was, like, 2015 or whatever, and he takes a photo of it with, like, Flash, takes another photo, steps back, takes another photo, and everyone else pretends to be asleep as they go back in. Next day rolls around, and they're walking to their first activity from uh, breakfast. And Ty and Benjamin happen to be in the same group. And Ty's like, dude, the emo kid's insane. Like, that was ridiculous last night. And Benjamin's like, I've never been more freaked out besides the first night, bro. Like, this, this kid's insane. And at this point, they start talking about the camping retreat. So I mentioned this like a couple minutes ago when the camp counselor said, you guys, you guys don't want to miss the special fun camping retreat we're doing. So they stayed out in cabins. But part of the wilderness camp, whatever, at the very end of it, at the very like the last Friday night to Saturday, they go, they hike out kind of far, farther out into the woods. They bring like uh, camping equipment and they kind of like camp out like that. So they both of like Ty and Benjamin were a little bit worried because that basically meant that they were going by group and they were going to be out in the woods in tents by themselves with the creepy emo kid. 
So anyways, let's just fast forward to that day. It's Friday, and everyone is kind of packing their little bags, and the camp counselor for each group packs their, like, supply kit, medical supplies, radio, the food that they're going to be eating, and he's like, all right, everyone grab, like, um, everyone, like, groups of two, grab a tent, and so sure enough, people pair up, and Benjamin and Ty are together, and they grab this tent, and they start walking over to the campsite. In time, Benjamin are like Benjamin was like, dude, I heard that like you know there's only like enough tents so that like we have to pair up with someone. And he said, I heard that it's random. I heard that we don't get to choose who we pair up with. And Ty's like, dude, that's insane. We already have friends. I get in the beginning them assigning us stuff, but like we know people now. This is the last day. Like, why would we need to sign bunk with someone random? And they're and Benjamin's like, dude, I don't know if that's true. That's just what I heard. So eventually, they get to the campsite. Anyways, so they get to the campsite, right? And, you know, they start doing, they set up, they're kind of like, they sit around a bunch of logs. So they, they like light a little fire and they have like baked beans in a can or something. Then they also go out and they kind of like clear the land for to put down the tents. They all set up a bunch of tents in the group of two that they carried it over in. And Ty at this point is thinking, all right, we're good because I'm going to be with Benjamin because, I mean, we're in groups of two already. Why would they need to reassign us groups? And so once again, they were asked back to the campsite, or not the, the original campsite, but the little campfire they made. It's getting kind of late, and the camp counselor's like, all right, guys, time for me to assign you your bunk mates or your camp tent mates. And Ty in his head is like, no, 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 no. So Benjamin and so-and-so, so-and-so and so-and-so. So, and you know when there's like that one guy you don't want to be with or something like that, and like you're being assigned in a list, and you, and you don't hear your name, but you also don't hear his name. And the number of combinations starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and you start freaking out. Well, this is what was happening to Ty until he realized that he was doomed before, you know, the words were even said. Because the camp counselor went through the entire list, but he didn't say Ty's name or the emo kid's name. And that's when the camp counselor said, Ty and the emo kid. Obviously said his real name, but you know what I mean. And Ty was just like... Oh, I'm not gonna make it tonight. I'm not gonna survive. I better write some like uh, my some letters to my mom saying I love you because I'm not making it tonight. Oh my god! And Benjamin is just staring at him like, and afterwards walks up to him and says, "Hey, if you need help, yeah, like we gotta come up with some kind of signal." So Ty's like, "Okay, I'm gonna like, I don't like." I'm just going to run out of there and I'm going to run over to, like no signals, no nothing. I'm running over to your campsite if anything happens. And Benjamin's like, all right, that's totally fine, man. So anyways, Ty goes up to the emo kid. He's like, so looks like we're bunking. And the emo kid is like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> and Ty's like, yeah, man. He's like, well, I guess you're one of my more favorite mortals that I know. And Ty's like, <laughs> yeah. So they both like put down their sleeping bags in this kind of very cramped tent. And Ty is just sitting there like, okay, okay. And they have this kind of light. And it's like one of those like uh, battery powered lights. And the emo kid's like, good night, Ty. And turns it off. And Ty's like, <gasps> like starts completely freaking out. He's like, okay, okay. I can't see anything, but we're okay. And that's when he hears the emo kid stand up. And Ty's like, no, 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 no. And the emo kid is like standing above him. And he's like, all right, well, maybe I should just accept my destiny. And that's when the emo kid, instead of striking him over there with a rock or something, just leaves. He opens up the camp tent and walks out. And Ty is like, what? So Ty kind of like gets up and he looks out and he sees the emo kid and the emo kid is like standing or is like crouching on all fours. And then he starts howling, starts howling to the full moon. He's like, Ewe! but it's like a really weird howl. And Ty's just like, what? And that's when he hears the kind of like the camp counselor who's with us be like, hey, hey, who's that? You're not allowed to be outside your campsite. And you just see the emo kid go, oh, uh oh, and just sprints towards like the uh, sprints towards the tent. So Ty jumps back into his bed, and the emo kid, who's not very coordinated apparently, instead of like jumping through the wind, like the the open flap, jumps right through the tent. So breaks right through the tarp of the tent, cracks the entire thing. The entire thing comes collapsing down, 
and Ty just Ty just like has his eyes closed as the entire tent falls on top of him. And that's when you hear all this yelling and the camp counselor's like, what's going on over here? Are you guys all right? And he just like starts ruffling, rum- rummaging through all the like the rubble and stuff. And Ty starts like getting up and he pushes the stuff off of him. The camp counselor was like, was that you out there doing those howling noises? He's like, no. And then sure enough, the emo kid is just standing there like you. And he says to him, like, you wouldn't understand what I was doing. And the camp counselor was like, it was, oh, I told you before that you can't be leaving your tent during the nighttime. Like, after I said goodbye, you were supposed to go to your tent and not leave it. You were out there. And he's like, I was performing a protection ritual. And camp, camp counselor was like, what? I was performing a protection ritual so that everyone would be safe at night from the demons and ghosts of the underworld. Camp counselor was like, uh, What? And at that point, right, they just realized, okay, this is a lost cause. And at this point, the worst thing was that uh, there was nowhere for them to sleep because uh, the camp was completely destroyed, or the tent was completely destroyed. So the camp counselor was like, fine, you two, bring your sleeping bags. You can sleep in my tent. So the three of them are, are kind of like crushed in there. And eventually the camp counselor was like, all right, you two are in here. I'm going to sleep outside. No shenan- shenanigans. So it was the most uncomfortable sleep of Ty's entire life. But eventually, the day is over. He gets up. You know, they start packing up their stuff, and they're walking back to the campsite. And that's when Ty meets up with Benjamin and is like, dude, like, what? Ha- like, you're not going to believe it. And Benjamin's like, I heard a lot of yelling. Are you okay? So Ty tells him the story. He's like, dude, that's insane. So anyways, they get back, and uh, Ty, sing- Ty actually had a really good time at the camp, minus the emo kid, like, cringe fest or whatever. Eventually, Ty's parents come to pick him up. And Ty's mom's like, man, you got to tell me all about it. Like, how was it? Ty's like, it was really good, but it's quite a story. And so for the entire, like, two-hour car ride back, Ty tells them the entire story. And let me just say, Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. How's it going, everyone? I hope you're having a great day because today we have a story of probably one of the cringiest emo kids on planet Earth. I'm not even kidding. This is probably one of the craziest stories I've received, so sit back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted this story. Let's call him Oliver. So this all happened back in the good old days of like 2014, 2015, when like goth, emo, uh, all that type of stuff was like super popular. And by the way, if you dress goth or emo, I literally don't care. That's a totally fine style. As long as you aren't an emo kid like this kid, you're totally cool in my book. So anyways, right, this all started when Oliver and his friends were in the mall. And this was way back in the day. And Oliver and his friends were just kind of like walking around in the mall. They were trying to figure out something to do. I mean, it was a Saturday. So, I mean, who knows? Like, you know, I mean, like they, they were trying to figure out something that they wanted to do. And Oliver's friend was like, hey, man, do you mind if we stop in Hot Topic? Hot Topic is a t-shirt store that sells a lot of store, a lot of stores, sells a lot of different types of t-shirts, a lot of like trending stuff, a lot of like, and, and since, you know, emo and goth was kind of trending at the time, they sold a lot of shirts and attire that really fit with that outfit. Like you got like black t-shirt that says like society. And then you got like a, uh, a, a spiky collar. I don't know, man. But anyways, right, Oliver and his friends stopped in Hot Topic, and Oliver wasn't really, you know, there to, like, buy something, so he was kind of just walking around and chilling, and he accidentally bumps into the emo guy, or the, the emo guy. I'm introducing a new guy, emo kid, whatever. We'll call him the emo kid. So anyways, right, this kid turns around, and he's got this, like, this black t-shirt on. He's got a spiky choller spiky collar choker type thing he's got black pants he's got black shoes on his hair is black and it's like slicked down so he has these like massive really weird bangs where you can't even see his face he's like watch where you're going punk and oliver's like sorry man he's like wait i knew you dude you're from my school and oliver's like yeah, I, I think we're in class together. No, I've, I've seen you around, though, because Oliver's starting to remember this one time he saw this really weirdo-looking kid who was like, Ugh, man, no one gets me. And so sure enough, the, the kid, the emo kid, is like, Bro, I don't think you bumped into me on purpose. I think you were coming for me and my kind. And Oliver's like, dude, what, what, what are you talking about? And the emo kid's like, Bro, 
I think we both know that you just hate the emo kids, and two other emo kids appear at a some like appear basically appear out of thin air, and they were like, "What's this kid talking about? Like, what's going on over here?" And the emo kids like, "Yeah, this kid over here goes my school, and he hates me on purpose, and he just bumped into me, and it was crazy." I, I, I. Oh, you can't do this to us, man. And the other emo kid's like, yeah, yeah. Well, what do you have against the emo kids? And at this point, right, Oliver was literally just standing in a Hot Topic t-shirt store because his friend wanted to buy a t-shirt. And Oliver's head, he's like, bro, please hurry up and get that t-shirt. But he says, look, I accidentally bumped into this kid, like this guy. I'm sorry. It's not on purpose. You can trust me. And the emo kid's like, uh, no, dude, I totally know what, like, a bump on purpose would feel like. That one felt so purposeful, like I literally felt the purpose in the bump. It was crazy. And, and Oliver's like, dude, what do you mean by that? And the emo kid's like, are you getting aggressive with me, son? Uh, do you want to fight me, son? Oh, he wants to fight me, dude. And at this point, Oliver's like, all right, guys, all right, boys, have a good day. Oliver goes over, finds his friend. He's like, dude, I got, I, I met a bunch of weirdos. They want to fight me. I literally bumped into them. And like his, Oliver's friend's like, all right, dude, like that's like, oh, all right, we'll, we'll go. That's fine. And then Oliver's friend sees this like pack of like emo kids walk over and Oliver's friend starts cracking up. He's like, bro, you can't be serious. You can't seriously think, uh, wait, these kids, these kids want to fight you, dude. They're not going to do anything. They can probably barely walk here without fainting. And the kids are like waddling over. And the emo kid's like, don't think I forgot what you did, man. And so sure enough, right, you know, Oliver and his friend, they buy the t-shirt, they leave. And, you know, Oliver is telling his friends all about what's going down. His friend's like completely laughing. They find it hilarious. And that's because Oliver thinks to himself, well, I'm never going to see these kids again. It doesn't really matter, right? Oh, my God. Was Was Oliver wrong? Because this started one of the most insane sagas that Oliver has ever has ever had in his life. He was telling me that like he's experienced a lot of crazy things, but the story that is to follow what just happened is probably the craziest thing that ever happened to Oliver ever. So skip forward a week. An entire week has passed by, actually a little bit more because it's not a weekend. Oliver, it's a Monday morning. He gets up. He's like, oh my God, I gotta go in. So, you know, he gets up eats breakfast, gets on the bus. It's just like, oh my God, man. I, I, is it already Monday? Dude, that's freaking crazy. He gets into school and he's walking to his locker all kind of like half awake or whatever. He has his backpack on. But he gets to his locker and that's when he realizes that something, something's wrong because his locker is like halfway open. And, like, the lockers didn't have locks on them. But Oliver always, like, closed it by the end of the day. He'd grab his backpack, and he would shut it all the way, and it would close. And he noticed it was halfway open, which was weird, because no other lockers were halfway open. I mean, some were, but they were very obvious. The people just left them open or whatever. And Oliver goes up to his locker, and he opens it very close, like, very, very slowly. And that's when he sees a little something in the background. You know, he sees a little something in the very far back of his locker, so he, you know, he gets his, like, his iPhone, like, 3 or whatever, d- opens up his flashlight app, or <laughs> I remember when that was a thing, shines it, and sure enough, he sees in, like, in the back of his locker, in, like, black marker, he sees a, like, a skull and crossbones, like, scribbled on there, and then said, you're next, fear us. And, you know, at this point, Oliver is like, what, the- what, huh? Eh, what, 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 like, what's going on here, boys? Like, I don't, why? And so sure enough, like, Oliver, like, hits up his friend. He's like, bro, did you do this? And his friend's like, dude, no, I'm not cringe. <laughs> and and Oliver's like, all right, well, if it wasn't you guys, well, then who could it, like, that's, that's really weird. And remember, the whole emo experience, like, the emo kid thing that happened at Hot Topic over a week ago was a pretty crazy experience, but at that time, Oliver had completely forgotten, because don't forget that the main emo kid actually went to Oliver's school, and Oliver recognized him from being in the hallways once. So Oliver didn't even think for a second, like, he didn't even think of the emo kids when he was like, all right, who's probably going to be the one, like, who did this? Who's most likely that, like, probably went through and was trying to mess with me or whatever? And Oliver just didn't even think of the emo kid. So give it a couple days, right? A couple days later, you know, Oliver is kind of, like, towards the end of school. 
and uh, most people are gone, you know, Oliver's just, like, waiting, it's after class, Oliver's, like, waiting to go be picked up, but then he's like, oh, shoot, I forgot my backpack, I don't know, that happens, or whatever, so Oliver's walking back to his locker, and this is where, it's actually a little creepy, because he starts walking back to his locker, and it's like, he looks at his locker, and it's just scribbled in black pen. Like, nothing else. No other lockers. It says his locker has all of these black X's all over them. And it's done in Sharpie or whatever. But he's like, okay, whatever. This, like, this is kind of serious. Because, like, he looks around and no one else is around him. So this is, like, kind of weird now. He's definitely feeling kind of uncomfortable at the moment. So he goes in there and he goes to grab his backpack. And he sees a piece of paper sitting there. So he grabs the piece of paper he realizes it's a letter, but he doesn't read it yet because he grabs his backpack, he gets on out of there, and he goes out of the school. And now he's standing where, you know, people are getting picked up or whatever. And this is where he feels more comfortable to actually read the letter. So he opens up the letter and it says, I'm going to try and read in the emo kid voice. Don't think you could have gotten away from us, man. <laughs> The emo kids have not forgotten your sins, and you shall pay for them. Next time, don't mess with the popular loaders ever again. And then it had this, like, weird, like, raven at the bottom. And apparently that was, like, the emo guild crust, crest or whatever, dude. I, I don't know. But at this point, Oliver's like, oh, my God, it's the freaking emo kid that I bumped into with the Hot Topic. That's the kid behind all this or whatever. So he's like, all right, I'm just going to, next time I see him, I'm just going to tell him to leave me alone and to kind of, I'm just going to scare him. He's, I mean, he, he's, he's full of nothing, right? He's full of nothing. And so sure enough, the next day rolls around and he gets on the bus. And once again, Oliver isn't even really thinking about the weird stuff going on, but he gets on the bus and he's half awake and he's looking, you know how you walk down the bus and you can see all the people sitting in the seats. He looks in the way back and he's like stops for a second because he sees something that's very reckoned that he remembers. Long black hair, bangs in the front of the face. And he's like, oh my God, wait, wait, that's the emo kid. And all of a sudden he hears from the back of the bus, wait, hello there, Oliver, why don't you sit next to me? And Oliver's like, how does he know my name? Whatever. And Oliver's like, all right, well, this is going to be actually a great opportunity for me to sit down and kind of, like, scare this kid and tell him to, like, basically to piss off, right? So Oliver gets to the back of the bus, and he sees the emo kid, and he sits there. He's like, dude, I don't know what's up with you, but why why do you keep doing weird things to my locker? And he says, and the emo kid's like, hey, so you've noticed. You've noticed that the emo guild has noticed your presence and has decided that you are mortal enemy number one. And uh, Oliver's like, What? The emo kid's like, so you must not know about the emo guild. Well, someone so ignorant as you probably would have known that anyways. But anyways, the emo guild is the guild of all the emos in our area. They get together, and since everyone's a hater and part of society, we've decided to guild together and join our forces. And if anyone strikes one of us, we will all combine and strike them down 20 times as hard. And Oliver's like, all right, man, well, you struck pretty hard with the locker. Ah, scared me. Got me good. And the emo kid's like, nice try, Oliver, if that even is your real name. And Oliver's like, yes, that's my birth name. And he's like, whatever. You don't even know what's coming next. <laughs> Real quick, if you made it this far into the video and are busy doing something, comment emo down below. I'll try and hard as many comments to say that. Then also, if you want to support the channel, binge watch these videos at, while you're doing something. And uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you're doing while binge watching these videos. Binging the video supports the channel so much and I appreciate it. And also, I'll be shouting out random people who tell me how they're supporting the channel, like these people on screen right now. Thank you. Let's get back to the story. So eventually the bus gets to the stop, the bus stop where the school is. Oliver gets up and the emo kid's like, Wait, you must know that you are facing off against the emo clan and you will not have any idea of what's coming. And Oliver's like, all right, uh, can I at least get your name so I can know who I'm facing off against? Fine, I guess that is only what a respectable duelist would do anyways, so fair. I am Sir Ben 
the great wizard archduke nemesis Leonardo DiCaprio III. And Oliver's like, so your name's Ben? Yes, whatever, that is my mortal name. And Oliver's like, okay, Ben. It is Ben! The-. And he's like, all right, I don't need to hear it. Fine. Okay. Bye. So Oliver walks away. And it's like, all right. Oliver's thinking on this. He's like, you know what? These kids are weird, and they have way too much time on their hands. So I don't really want to see what, like, weird concoction of weird stuff they decide to put in my locker or whatever they decide to do. I don't want to see it. So you know what? I'm going to strike back. I'm going to figure out everything about this Ben kid, and I'm going to have a little ammunition to, I'm not going to say blackmail him, but blackmail him. Uh, yeah, it just is what it is, man. I'm sorry. Like, they're playing dirty. I'm playing dirty. Sorry. So sorry. If you don't, if you, you don't hate the player, hate the game. Right? So anyways, Oliver immediately starts hitting up all of his friends. He's like, do you know this Ben kid? They're like, no, no, I don't know this Ben kid. One kid's like, yeah, he's a weird emo kid. He's like, all right, what do you know about him? He's like, he's weird and emo or something. And Oliver's like, you're, not, you're no help. So anyways, Oliver eventually talks to his friend Stormy, who's a girl. And, uh, you, know, Stor- you know, Oliver's like, hey, sorry, I'm trying to find, this weird kid is like trying to like beef with me. I just want to find dirt on him. Do you know this kid, Ben? Stormy's like, oh, do I know Ben? And Oliver's like, yes, yes, you know something, let's go. And he's like, please, please tell me whatever. Storm is like, well, you know Kate, right? And Ben's like, no, not Ben, sorry. Oliver's like, yeah, I know Kate. So Ben, the emo kid guy that's like being weird with you, is what Stormy's saying, has a massive crush on Kate. And Kate knows it. And, you know, Kate hasn't necessarily said no to him yet because he hasn't made any advances. And uh, Oliver's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, that's all I need. Can I talk to Kate for a second? And, you know, Stormy's like, yeah, sure, like, whatever. So eventually, Stormy sets Kate and uh, Oliver up, and Oliver's like, hey, please, he explains the entire situation. And Kate's like, look, Ben, the emo kid, has been weird to me for a very long time. Like, I used to think it was this funny, but he's weird. He keeps looking at me. He keeps, like, he keeps, like, professing his love to me. You know what? I'll team up with you. We'll take him down. Oliver's ecstatic at this point. So basically, they come up with a plan. If the emo, next time the emo kids strike, Oliver is going to find the emo kid and ask for, like, mercy. And if the emo kid doesn't give him mercy, and, you know, Oliver doesn't actually expect him to give him mercy, basically, assuming the emo kid doesn't give him mercy, Oliver is going to say, well, I'm going to give you one more chance to give me mercy. And the emo kid's going to be, he's going to be like, what, what do you mean? Like, I have the upper ground. And then all of a sudden, Oliver is going to, like, pull out, like, a, basically, text message conversation with Kate, which is going to be fabricated, about how, like, he knows someone perfect for her, for her and how, like, uh, Oliver's friend, who we'll just call Bob, no, we're not going to, we're going to call him, uh, what should we call him? Oliver's friend Ryan is, like, perfect for Kate, and the truth is, Kate has, like, a crush on Ryan, and Oliver's basically going to say, hey, if you do any, like, if you do anything else, I'm going to set up Ryan and Kate. And Kate already thinks Ryan is super attractive, and Ryan is down to get with her, and I have all the power to connect them, and you will never be able to date Kate, or, yeah, you'll never be able to date Kate ever again, and this will destroy the emo kid. So anyways, after this plan is done, once again, Oliver is walking back to his locker. And sure enough, once again, like, you know, and he reported last time all the, like, the, the exes and stuff, and the janitor came and cleaned it up, and one, uh, he goes to the locker, and sure enough, there is this, like, crudely drawn black raven. And then it says, emo, gi- emo guild underneath it. And so, you know, Oliver's like, all right, they struck again. Let's see if this kid's on the bus. So the next day, Oliver is really hoping that the emo kid takes the bus again, because this would be kind of difficult to go and find him. But sure enough, the emo kid is sitting in the back with his, like, weird super long hair that's like covering his entire face he's like he's wearing like he uh, he has this like robe today this like black cape or whatever or something and he's sitting there and he's like Oliver I've seen do you want to sit next to me and uh, because I don't know if you've seen your locker yesterday but it has a little uh, uh I don't know it has a little something on it and Oliver's like yes Ben I know I was wondering if we could talk about, you know, maybe a surrender, my surrender. And the emo kid's like, I knew it. I knew you were weak. I knew you were sad. But no, 
I will not show you mercy. I will just not do it. It's not in the way of the emo guild. Because you're a part of society. Freak society, bro. And uh, Oliver's like, look, Ben, I'm going to give you one more chance to reconsider. And the emo kid's like, what? Give me a chance to reconsider? You're asking me for my forgiveness. I will not reconsider anything. And Oliver's like, fine. I know about Kate. The emo kid's like, what? <laughs> you know about my love. <laughs> I can barely keep a straight face doing this. Anyways, emo kid's like, you know about my love. And Oliver's like, yes. In fact, I know more than that. You know Kate, right? Well, I have a friend, Ryan. He's a good looking man. And I was talking to Kate and I was talking to her about Ryan. And I just asked her, you know, what she thought. And Kate confessed to me that she really thinks Ryan is so attractive. And you know who's my best friend? Ryan. You know who Ryan finds attractive? Kate. And with a snap of my fingers, Mr. Emo Man, I could set the two of them up. And you will never have a chance to date her for the rest of high school or middle school. Or I don't care, right? For the rest of high school. And, th I mean, it's not like the Ben, the emo kid, was going to date her anyways. But the emo kid was like, no! No! What do you want, you cruel beast? You cruel monster? I don't know why you put my love up like that. You can have whatever you want. You can have my riches. You can have my gold. You can have my Twilight Limited Edition series book signed by the author himself. You can have anything of mine. And Oliver's like, dude, I, I just want you and your weirdo friends to stop. Emo kid's like, the emo guild is not going to like this. They'll know that I have a weakness. I might be kicked out of the emo guild. No. And Oliver's like, all right, well, if, you're, if they're not going to stop, if your buddies aren't going to stop, you and your weirdos aren't going to stop harassing me, well, then, you know what? Kate and my friend Ryan are going to be sitting in a tree. Emo kid's like, no, don't say it. Don't say it. K-I-S, no, S-I-N, no, G, no, fine, fine, Oliver, you cruel monster, you can have whatever you want then, fine, well, fine, we'll do it, you, no, no, nothing more will happen, I'll tell the emo guild that, uh, that you surrendered to me and I was merciful, because that's part of the emo guild, and Oliver's like, didn't you say that was the opposite? It doesn't matter, Oliver. I'm trying to work with you, idiot. And Oliver's like, okay. You know what? If this is true, Kate, you know, Kate and Ryan, you know, they're not going to be like that. But just so you know, if you or one of your little emo friends do anything to me, anything, Kate and Ryan are a thing. Emo kid's like, fine. You drive a hard bargain. I'll call off the attacks. And from that point on, Oliver has never received another emo style, I don't even know if you could call it an attack, but he never received weird stuff in his locker or weird in carvings of the emo guild or anything like that. And uh, he lived happily ever after. Uh, yeah. Click on the like. video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Today I got a story time for you guys about probably one of the weirdest, strangest emo kids to ever exist. So yeah, I don't know, get something to eat, get comfortable, subscribe if you're new, and let's call today's subscriber who submitted the story, let's call her Claire. So this takes place during Claire's class, right? She During school, she was in class, and there's this boy that Claire was talking to, and she, you know, she kind of liked him, right? Hey man, it, 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 it happens, you know, life happens. Let's call this guy Ben, because... I'm, I'm not creative, man. There's also another girl in Claire's class, and we're just gonna call her the emo girl. And Claire didn't know this at the time, but she really did know this. <laughs> she really got to know this pretty soon, but at the time, she didn't know that the emo girl had a massive crush on Ben, right? And part of me feels for the emo girl a little bit, like, I've definitely been in situations where in middle school I had a crush on this girl and she was obviously talking to another guy that like, you know, would have definitely gotten her. Like, the, I, I was not the one for her, some other guy was. It sucks, man. It really does. I'm not going to say it doesn't. However, it doesn't justify the actions that you'll see in this video, which are pretty crazy. But anyways, right, so this all started one day when Claire was talking to Ben. And she was sitting there, you know, she's talking to Ben, and it kind of seemed like Ben was going to like her back, and he was very engaged talking to her, like they were flirting a lot. And this is when, you know, Claire, like, 
kind of like spaced out a little bit. You know when you're like looking at someone and then you kind of space out a little bit and you look at all the stuff behind them when you're like uh, focus of vision kind of changes and shifts. So she kind of like spaced out a little bit and looked behind Ben and she very briefly made eye contact with this emo girl in her class. If you dress emo, this video is not against you. I think the style is totally fine and I like you either way. As long as you don't act like this emo girl, then you're totally fine. So basically, right, this girl had super long dyed black hair. She was like a natural, like a brunette, like a year ago, but then she dyed it all black. She wears all these like goth skull rings or whatever. And it's kind of the style, you know what I mean? And sure enough, this emo girl that Claire doesn't really talk to just because they were never really friends is just staring into like the pits of her souls, dude. Like, the, the pits of her souls staring into like the I, I don't know what i'm trying to say she they were just like deeply staring at her very very kind of like angrily and claire quickly breaks eye contact because like i don't know man she's not trying to like uh, she's just like i'm not engaging with this like let's hope that's a coincidence claire completely forgets about that and goes back to talking with ben right and so sure enough you know she's talking to ben she's like mm, flirting whatever right insert flirtatious uh, conversation and by the end of the conversation, you know, the bell rings or whatever, and Claire leaves to go to either recess, lunch, another class. I don't know specifically what, but whatever it was, she leaves to go and do it. And the emo girl quickly follows behind her. Like, the emo girl was kind of far behind her in class, so the emo girl is, like, speed walking towards her. And Claire is kind of thinking... Oh boy, uh, I guess that eye contact earlier today was not an accident. It was not like an, a mistake. Uh, you know how you sometimes like, I, I know I'll do this. I'll like space out and not even pay attention and then realize I've been staring at someone for like five minutes. And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I swear I'm just zoning out. And Claire was kind of hoping that the emo girl just happened to be accidentally staring into her soul through her pupils. But uh, yeah, it was not an accident because the emo girl walks up to her is like, hey, we gotta talk. And Claire's like, um, okay. And the emo girl is like, I don't know if you know this, but Ben, Ben is mine. He is my boyfriend, and I don't want to see you start talking to him. And Claire is really taken aback because at first she's like, oh, wait, is Ben dating someone? Like, I've talked to all my friends, and I'm pretty sure, like, I, because, like, Claire made sure beforehand that, you know, Ben wasn't dating anyone, so she could kind of, like, show that she was interested and not get rejected or whatever, and uh, she was pretty sure that he wasn't dating anyone, and also, if he was to date someone, Claire didn't really think that the emo girl was his type, but she was like, oh, so you're dating him, and the emo girl is like, well, not yet. But he's mine! Don't question my authority on this matter. You will you will suffer the consequences if you want to steal my boyfriend away from me. And Claire's just like, uh, wh what do you mean your boyfriend? Are you, so you guys are dating or aren't dating? She's like, well, not yet, but like super soon. Like, it's totally happening. And the thing is, Claire, you're just getting in the way of this. You're getting in the way of what is meant to be. I was performing a spell last night, and in my cauldron, I got, like, the spirits told me that Ben and I are meant to be together. And if you want to get in the way of spirits and magic, well then, oh, by, my, by all means, like, go ahead and curse yourself. But I'm just letting you know that if you get in between Ben and I becoming boyfriend and girlfriend and soon-to-be husband and wife forever then you will regret it. And the emo girl kind of like hunches over and like shuffles away. And Claire was just stunned, uh, to say the least. She was kind of just at a loss for words at this point because it's not every day that, you know, you're walking around and, uh, you know, the emo girl in your class, if you have one, comes up to you and says that, yeah, by the way, the gods of magic literally said that, you know, that guy that you're talking to, that he and I are meant to be together and that we are actually boyfriend and girlfriend even though we aren't, so stay away, bro and then shuffle away. That's just not a, you know, a day-to-day -day occurrence. I don't know, but maybe it is. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But uh, sure enough, you know, Claire kind of was like, okay, well, I'm not going to be bullied out of talking to this guy that I like. Like, I'm not going to be bullied out of it, man. Like, that's just not, that's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? And Claire's like, you know what? I, I think I'm just going to, you know, keep talking to this guy. I think I just am. So the next day rolls around, and the only class that Claire has with Ben 
is the class that she has with the emo girl. So it's not like Claire could really talk to Ben a lot in other classes. However, Claire does talk to him every kind of like lunch break. They get lunch together and the emo girl doesn't eat lunch in the uh, lunch room. So I don't think she knows or if she does, she's not trying to see that. Fair enough, I guess. But sure enough, you know, Claire, you know, Ben comes over to Claire because they kind of were talking every single day. I don't think the I don't think the emo girl's ever spoken to Ben before, but they're about to they're about to be boyfriend and girlfriend guys. Stop hating. <laughs> no, but uh so Ben comes over just like every other day and Claire was a little bit weird and Ben's like, "Are you good?" And she's like, "Yeah, yeah, actually it's nothing. Sorry. I was just I was just spacing out." In reality, Claire was like, "Okay. <laughs> this will be interesting cuz she notices the emo girl is intensely, intensely staring at her, right? Just looking at her so angrily. And uh, as Ben walks over and when Ben sits down, her brow furrows and her like, she like lifts up her hand and like crunches it into a fist of rage. Like that Arthur meme where it's like his, his fist is all balled up. Like, so, so Claire was distracted by that, obviously. And uh, she was like, oh no, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just spacing out. So Claire and Ben, you know, they continue to talk and, you know, they, they, they flirt a lot as always, you know, it kind of, Claire's kind of getting a feeling that, you know, Ben's going to try and make a move at some point kind of soon, just by kind of the natural progression over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, Claire's all for that, man. I mean, she was kind of like trying to put herself out there so that Ben would, uh, Ben would hopefully come around and, you know, ask her out or something. Sure enough, you know, the bell rings again and Claire is kind of like power walks out of there. She grabs her bag quickly. She's like, aha, Ben, I'll see you in the next one because Ben and her go to totally different directions. So it's not like she can walk with Ben. And so Claire is like power walking out of there because she's like, all right, emo girl is coming for me, man. Like I, I, because Claire wasn't looking at the emo girl, but she could just feel it. Like she had kind of like the raid boss music going on. She's like, oh man, I got to get out of here, dude. Final boss encroaching, encroaching, man. Like I, I, I got to get out of here. So she grabs her backpack, quickly like puts it on her shoulder and starts to like sprint out, not sprint out of the classroom, man. Her teacher would have been like, stop running, stop it, stop. But sure enough, right now, the emo girl was just as fast and just as intent to be talking to Claire. And she comes up to Claire. She's like, you didn't heed my warning. You didn't listen to me. And Claire goes, dude, I don't know you, but it doesn't seem like you and Ben ever talk. I don't think you're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, y you threatening me with your magic powers or whatever is not going to make me stop talking to this guy, dude. Like, can you go away? And the emo girl is like, fine, but just know that I will give you one last warning. And Claire's like, oh boy, kind of rolls her eyes or whatever. And the emo girl's like, if I see you talking with him again, it is on sight. And, and Claire's like, bro, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Huh? And the emo girl's all like, stop laughing at me. It's not funny. It's serious. I will give you one last chance. And this is your final opportunity to cease your terrible behavior. Or you, yes, you, Claire, will suffer the consequences. And Claire's just like, Oh my god, you you can't you you gotta be kidding me, dude. Like there's there's no chance. So she's like, okay, uh, thanks for talking to me. Uh, is that all? And the email girl's like, yes. One last chance. Don't forget it. Don't you forget it. One last chance. And once again, emo girl scuffles off. A little spoiler, uh, Claire does not listen to the emo girl. In the next day in class, the emo girl does something completely crazy. But real quick. Comment emo down below if you want to harden your comment, as that is the secret word of the day, and I will try and heart your comment to say thank you. And also, if you want to support the channel, binge watch videos, or just watch a bunch of videos after this one, or in your free time when you're drawing, about to go to bed, playing video games, go watch one of the playlists. I got emo kid playlists, spoil kid playlists, and if you do, comment down below so I can personally say thank you, as it really does help. And also, uh, profile pic army looking strong. So you thought that that was it for the craziness from this emo girl that going up and threatening that the evil gods of spells and magic and wizardry will, she will suffer the consequences. You thought that that was bad. And no, 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 no. Pause, bro. You're not even close to what's about to happen because the next day 
it rolls around. Okay, I keep saying that like that's something crazy. Oh no, the next day happens. Time is linear. Raw. But anyways, right? Next day rolls around. Claire goes into class and she makes sure that she's talking to Ben and she makes sure that the emo kid it, or the emo girl specifically is seeing this. And Claire is kind of like a little bit upset because she's like, you know what? This girl is bossing me around. I'm not standing for it. So Claire decides that, you know, she's just going to make a move. Like, she's going to make a move. Um, so anyways, Claire is talking with Ben, and, you know, she sees that the emo girl is at an angle where she can see both of them pretty clearly. And so Claire looks at the emo kid in the emo girl in the eyes. This is a little mean, I'm not going to lie. However, it is kind of justified since the emo girl was, like, threatening to pull up or square up or, like, it's on site if you talk to him or talking crazy or whatever. So this is a little bit justified, not saying it's not mean. But, you know, uh, uh, Claire is kind of like, oh, Ben, like, tell me about you or whatever. And what Claire does is she puts her hand on, like, a Ben's leg or whatever. Kind of, like, as an indication of, like, I like you. Uh, uh, don't go ahead and do this. I, especially, like, you gotta ask people first. Like, you can't go around just putting your hands on people, bro. As the Connor Pug's endorsement, don't, don't do this. But anyways, like, I mean, she was, she already talked it, like, she, either way, she does it. And Ben reciprocates very nicely back and, Ben kind of, like, puts his hand on her chair, right? You know when you're, like, in the movie, the classic movie theater scene where it's, like, you reach your hand behind them to, like, uh, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. And this, the emo girl, legitimately snaps, dude. She freaking snaps. And you're, in that, you're, you're probably thinking she's going to go up and put a spell on them or she's going to like go raw and like sprint to the bathroom to have explosive diarrhea. No, none of those things are true. You know what this girl does when she said it's on site? She meant it because Claire one moment was like kind of relaxing in the company of her soon to be boyfriend, spoiler Ben. In the next moment, she was on the ground. Do you know why? Because the emo girl freaking tackled her, dude. The emo girl was got so angry at the sight of them, like, basically, uh, they weren't holding hands, but they were, like, same level of, like, romantic intimacy as holding hands. She was so mad at that sight that the emo girl legitimately got up out of her seat, buckled her head down, sprinted like a D1 quarterback, and knocked Claire out of, like, tackled Claire, basically, and was, like, and started hissing. So right now, Claire's on the ground. The emo girl is on top of her. Ben is sitting there in complete shock, like, what, what, what? And everyone in the class turns around, including the teacher. Um, because they were supposed to be, like, reading a book or something in pairs. They were n None of this nonsense was supposed to be going down. So the teacher is just like, what's going on over here? And the emo girl is like, is like hissing the entire time. He's like, I told you it was on site. Stay away from my boyfriend. And Ben is just so confused. And Claire is like covering her face because the emo girl is like very faintly, but still trying to like claw at her. It's like, don't, 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 don't like with their big, like, uh, you know, kind of like in Pokemon, like meow, meowth, or I forgot the cat Pokemon that like, team rocket has you know how that like it has scratch attack that does like negative one damage that was kind of the equivalent of what like this the emo girl was doing to claire so no damage was done but it was very strange and uh sure enough you know claire the next moment feels the sensation of the emo girl leaving her body like being picked up so she opens her eyes and she sees the emo girl is literally drag being dragged away by the teacher and dragged out of the classroom and claire gets up and Ben looks at her with just, just this look of, huh? And uh, at this point, Claire's like, Ben, I got some explaining to you. I got some explaining to do. And Claire explains everything that I just told you Click guys. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today I got a story of probably one of the craziest emo kids of all time, and I've told a lot of crazy stories, so strap in, uh, subscribe if you like stories, and let's call today's subscriber, uh, let's call her Luna. So Luna was a tennis player and was pretty good at tennis, and over the summer her mom sent Luna to a tennis camp, and this story starts pretty far through the tennis camp. So the tennis camp lasted about 
one week long. And on the last day, which was Friday, all the parents would come and they would watch kind of like a tennis tournament of all the kids who were playing and learning how to play and getting better during the week. There would be a big tournament. They would have like, I don't know, a fake little trophy thing. But the main important thing was that there was a big tournament at the end of the week and all the parents came to watch. So this story starts on that Thursday. So this is the day before the last day, which is the big event. And uh, this this, uh, tennis camp took place at a college. So they had access to a college dining hall and Luna and her two friends were walking you know to go try and find a table and Luna's two friends said oh look over there or one of Luna's friends said oh look over there there's a table so Luna's two other friends you know went over and sat down the table Luna said I'll be right back I'm gonna go get something so Luna walks over to the dining hall grabs something to eat and is walking back and while Luna's walking back she's not really paying attention like she's kind of like I don't know spacing out or looking on her phone or for some reason she's not paying full attention to her surroundings so unfortunately she bumps into this guy and you know the guy had a tray of food and the food honestly it wasn't even that bad like the food sure like a little bit got on his shirt um, but it wasn't like the entire tray exploded all over his shirt and his clothes were soiled and ruined beyond repair Like, yeah, dude, you got sprayed a little bit. That sucks, but it's time to move on. And Luna was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. That's so embarrassing. And like, she's like, like, I'm so sorry. Like I wasn't paying attention. And this kid, you know, Luna's looking at this kid and this kid is very clearly like an emo kid. And by the way, there's nothing wrong if you dress like goth or emo or whatever. It's a style. And I think a lot of my viewers have the style and I don't personally do it myself. That isn't my style, but I rock with you if you do that. No hard feelings. However, if you're like this emo kid, bro, you got to change some things in your life. That's all I'm saying. Because this emo kid looks at Luna, looks her dead in the eyes and then takes out a book. And Luna's like, eh, what? And the emo kid, so he has this book in his hand, and Luna notices that there's, like, ancient uh, hieroglyphics? Dude, my brain is not working right now. There's, like, ancient, like, letters and all these, like, symbols on the book. Basically, it looks like, like, a wizard or witch book or something. And Luna's thinking to herself, all right, there's no shot that, like, That's actually like a wizard book or something. And the emo kid reaches into his back pocket and takes out a wand. So he opens up the like the spell book and he's waving his wand around. He's like, you have made a great enemy. You've made a great mistake bumping into me on purpose. And Luna's like, it wasn't on purpose, man. Like, I swear to you, like I wasn't paying attention and I apologize for that. I should have been paying attention. You're right. Like, that's on me. However, like, come on now, it was an accident. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what kind of nonsense doobly doop you're doing right now. But he's like, silence, mortal. And he's like waving his wand around. He's like, hibbity bibbity bobbity boo. I put a spell, something like super goofy, but like supposedly like, I don't know, wizard tongue or something. He's like, bibbity boo, bobbity boo. I'm like, okay, bro, like, let's calm down now. He's like, there. You've been cursed. And he slams the book shut with one hand, puts the wand back in his pocket, puts the book back into his backpack, which he was carrying around. Or I guess not a backpack. I guess it was like a tennis bag with a racket in it. And the emo kid walks off. And Luna is just standing there, just kind of like, what? What just happened? Like, can we just have like a little pause and a rewind of what just happened here? Because I don't think that like I really understood what was going on because... There's not a shot that that actually just happened. So Luna goes back to the table with her two friends, and her two friends are like, what took you so long? And Luna's like, well, I actually have a very interesting answer that I bet you guys were not expecting. So Luna tells them the story, and they're like, one of them them was just like, oh my god, that's crazy. The other one was like, dude, like... I know that kid. Like I saw, I I was in a tennis group earlier this morning. We're practicing forehands. I know that kid. He was so weird, bro. He was all like, okay, he did. Okay. He wasn't like the other emo kid, bro. I'm just playing around, but he was like all like in the corner, hushed away. And when the coach like, like said to him, it was his turn. He kind of like looked up at him and flicked his long, dark hair back, kind of sighed. And then like, you know, hit a forehand or something. They're like, that kid was super weird, but I had no idea that he was like that weird. Because there's a difference between being kind of weird and putting spells on people randomly. Like that's just who 
two different ballparks, bro. Quick comment emo down below if you want to harden your comment. That is the secret word of the day, and I will do my best to hard as many comments as possible. I'm still getting over some complications with the uh, the the wisdom teeth, and that might take a couple days. So please don't take it personally if I don't heart your comment. Do know I still really appreciate it. And also, shout out to all the people who've been binge watching my videos, like going through and watching a ton of them, either via the playlist or just through the recommended. Please let me know in the comment section when you're doing this so I can heart it and say thank you. And just know that you're supporting the channel more than you can even imagine at this point. I really appreciate it. Back to the story. It gets crazy. Anyways, right, so the next day rolls around, and remember that, you know, Luna was at a tennis camp, and on the last day, which was the next day, because this whole spell incident happened on a Thursday, and the last day was on a Friday. So it was Friday, it was the last day, and it was only like a half day, because the parents would come and pick you up by the end of it, but anyways, right, there was a big tennis tournament, and all the parents came to watch. So it was a pretty big deal. And so everyone was sitting around on the tennis court. Um, and like the coach was standing at the very front. Everyone was sitting on the tennis court. And he was reading off his list of like, all right, guys, like, thank you for all your hard work this week. And finally, it pays off. Just know that, you know, win or lose, like, you know, we just want to make sure you have a fun time and that, you know, I mean, there can only be one winner. So you, you, you can't take it that personally if you don't win. Uh, the most important thing is to like, good sportsmanship, and have a fun time. And anyways, let me read off the pairings. So the pairings were read off, and Luna had a first round match where she played against another, some random guy or something, and she was better. She was probably one of the top 10 people at the camp. She didn't expect to win the tournament. I mean, the, the other people, there are, were some people that were much better than her, and maybe they're having a bad day or whatever, but Luna just wanted to you know, go out there, have some fun. So Luna's first round match went down really well. She won 6-2, 6-3, which is pretty solid win. If you guys know tennis, I used to play tennis a lot back in the day. That's why I can tell this story so well, um, at least the tennis parts. Uh, but anyways, things get really interesting when Luna goes into her second round match. The second round match is against a familiar character that you guys may or may not remember from earlier in the story. Yes, Luna is playing the emo kid. And let me just say that Luna did not forget the emo kid, but very well the converse is true too, because the emo kid had not forgotten about Luna either. Which means, yes, Luna and versus the emo kid are about to play after the emo kid put a spell on her. And uh, Luna's just looking at her opponent like, there's no way, there's, there's no way, man. Th there's no way. So anyways, right, you know, Luna, so uh, when, when you play tennis, you normally, like, you will warm up with your partner and then you'll get into playing. But basically, you both stand on two sides of a net, just very quickly for people who don't know. And so Luna was standing on one side of the, the net and the emo kid was, like, sulking over and kind of, like, was all hunched over and kind of, like, wandered over to the other side of the net. And so Luna walks up to kind of, like, the net in, the, in between and the, the emo kid walks up as well. And Luna's like, all right, like, do you want to warm up? And the emo kid is like, heh <laughs> insert maniacal laugh. I can't do a maniacal laugh right now. I'm just, I just can't do it. So insert like the most evil maniacal laugh from like TV shows and movies you can think of. And dude, out of all the responses Luna was expecting, okay, Luna was either responding, expecting like yes or no. It was a yes or no question. But out of all the responses that Luna was expecting, let me just say the mani a maniacal laugh was not on the list, dude. Like it just was not on the list. And so Luna's kind of thinking like, uh, okay. And then the emo kid goes on to say, huh, like finishes up his maniacal laugh and is like, why would I need to warm up when I have the curse on my side? And Luna was just like, oh, so, so we're still going with that. We're not just going to like, because Luna was kind of thinking, all right, well, let's just put yesterday behind us because that was very weird. You know what? Luna, Luna gave this guy you know, the privilege of allowing, you know, just to put that behind them. Because normally that's not a thing you just put behind, right? The fact that, like, you got a spell put on you, normally you don't just forget about that. But Luna was like, oh, okay, so no warm-up? And the emo kid said, yeah, well, I mean, I have the curse on my side, so why would I need to warm up anyways? And Luna was like, all right, fine, I really got to smack this kid.
So Luna and the emo kid kind of go immediately into playing the match, and so Luna spins the racket, and sure enough, it is the emo kid's choice. So basically, in the beginning of tennis, you spin like heads or tails, and if you get it right, you can choose to serve or have the other person serve. And the emo kid starts maniacally laughing. So once again, insert the like maniacal evil villain laugh after the racket is spun, and, uh, you know, Lunas is kind of looking at him like, dude, what? And the emo kid is like, looks like my curse is already working. <laughs> Insert again, another maniacal laugh. And Lunas is thinking to herself, all right, bro, like, let's not jump to conclusions. There's a 50-50 chance that you were going to get that. Like, come on now. In the back of Luna's mind, she was like, uh, well... I wonder if the curse is real, but her rational mind was able to take control and be like, all right, let's just smack this kid. I know I'm better than him. So sure enough, right, you know, the emo kid starts serving. Basically, that's the way you start a tennis point. So the emo kid throws it up, bops it in, and the serve is not that good. I'm, serve is the hardest part of tennis, in my opinion, but the serve is not that good. And Luna, really wanting to have a good impression to kind of quote unquote break the curse, winds up a massive forehand, completely crunches it, and obliterates the emo kid in the first point. Like this ball is blazing off of Luna's racket and just smack right past the emo kid. The emo kid wasn't even like the curse was the emo kid plus the curse were not good enough to give him the reaction time to be able to deal with it. That's how bad this whole thing was, dude. So Luna looks up at the emo kid, giving her the dirtiest look ever, because I don't think the emo kid realized that Luna was one of the top players at the uh, at the tennis camp, but he now he now realized that, you know, he was probably not going to win this. I think he walked in with a lot of confidence, also trying to scare her off because of, like, he remembered, oh, this is the girl I put the curse on. Odds are he would have, like, if this was a different person, he would have put a curse on them beforehand. Like, he would have walked up to the tennis net, whipped out his magic wand, and been like, blah, 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 you're now cursed or something, just to mess with their head. But since he's he's already done that, right, he was trying to, like, he was trying to use that as leverage. But anyways, the match continues, and the emo kid is getting destroyed. So at this point, the emo kid is down about 3-0, and they're only playing one set. Basically, in tennis, you play six, like, you play to six games. Whoever gets the six games first by win by two wins, and if you get to 6-6, six, six, uh, you play a tiebreaker. But anyways, right, Luna's up 3-0, so absolutely smoking the emo kid. And it's Luna's serve, and she serves it in, and it is very clearly a winning shot. However, it was close, right? It wasn't like, it was clearly in, but it wasn't like in by so far that like you'd have to be like crazy to say that it was out, right? And the emo kid was like out. Because if you don't know, uh, you, you make your own calls when you play tennis. There's no umpire unless you're really good. And this was a lower level. I think in the final match, like the final match of their big tournament, they might have like someone like officiating it. But the emo kid was like out, and Luna kind of looked at him like, no, dude, that wasn't, but like she can't really do anything. So they keep playing, right? And uh, Luna continues to crush this kid, con con continues to crush this fool, bro. Like, and the, e the emo kid continues to cheat. However, the emo kid is really only cheating when it's like, uh, I don't know, kind of close. So if like Luna hits a really good shot, but it's kind of close, the emo kid will just call it out. And this is super frustrating to Luna because she's losing a lot more points than she needs to, but she's still winning.